now we're getting into Lyle Convoy and Hopeless Beaches and a whole, whole, whole mess of shit. Um, I, I don't have my videos open like I normally do with this because now it's fucking Medicare time. That's right. Mr. Medicare <laughs> has reappeared on the stream and it is because of this series. And you know what? We're actually, um, yeah, you know, I think we can, I think we can get a, I'm going to get right about here. We're going to get into this. So the whole wild convoy, hopeless peaches thing to give it to you in a nutshell, the, the smallest nut that I can give you is this is art commentary community people mixed with furries mixed with bronies that think they are some sort of justice fighters their lead leo convoy steals his name from a japanese uh transformers beast wars type character and basically they've been on the internet for a while they've been they've had their fair share of dramas um but it really kind of hit a peak recently uh a lot more people have uh come to interact with lyo and a lot of uh different things have come to the surface about lyo um there's a lot of characters in this there's a lot of characters in this um the entirety of this, as you can see on screen from the deviant art stuff here, goes back to 2016. Um, all the parts of this roughly start in and around 2016. That is how far back this shit goes. We're talking a fucking decade. And what I mean by all the parts of this is we're going to watch this just because it's kind of funny. And it gets kind of mentioned later on, but Mr. Medicare was key in bullying one of the key people in what would become uh, the Senate, which the Senate is this group of just mass retardation run by this pseudo like Beast Wars fat model making dude from fucking texas like all these things are known i'm not doxing i'm not letting anything known here that isn't known okay this guy is he thinks he's tougher than he actually is he says that he was raised by a vietnam vet of some sort i don't know whether it's uh i've heard marine i've heard fucking uh army i've heard all sorts of shit the way he acts is some fatherless behavior shit the shit that he does in this fucking Senate is fucking downright fucking weird when you ask me. The shit that he has. Because he t sits there and he's we're going to hear shit about adopting people. And like, these are fucking adults, okay? The Senate is made for adults. Now, there was a couple kids in there. And there's a couple kids in a couple other servers that we're going to mention later on. But... The Senate is where a lot of this shit kind of comes to a head. And yeah, these people all think they're smarter than everybody. They, their mothers definitely fucking told them they were the smartest people in their fucking grade. Um, so like, that's the kind of people we're dealing with. But let's let Mr. Medicare here with his, his deviant art fuck ups and failures here, um, kind of explain one of our characters. And I'll, I'll if you know this, if you know the whole history of shit, you might catch who he's talking about here. So I'm going to let this play. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just realized that I was muted. So we're going to, we're going to restart this. We're going to restart this. Okay. Restarting. Apologies. Don't know how you got muted over there. I know you missed a lot. This is Jim with a bad mic still. Pre-cancer AIDS. We're going to be listening to some stuff. I do want you to give me your guesses on who's who this could be about. 
who the person in all of this could be about. Um, I know I had I know I had the stuff going, so you guys get at least read along. But it's kind of boring considering you could probably just hear me breathing in the background music. So let's restart this. Okay, so take two. Let's play this. Baby, what could that possibly, possibly refer to? A few people had some ideas, but um, you're in for a treat. Let me just put it that way. This is, uh, you're in for, you know, fuck it. You're in for a treat. Now, if you were to go onto DeviantArt and search up the term, I don't know, baby fur, you would get 13,580 results, as well as be put on a watch list by the FBI somewhere. I can almost guarantee you that. Right now, somebody by the name of Agent Johnson is watching this video to see if I'm really okay or not, because of the shit that I had to wade through over the last couple of days, looking at this horrendous fucking tank, this god-awful fucking thing that exists. Now, you might be asking yourself, if you're a little fucked in the head, what is baby fur, Jim? What exactly is this marvelous thing? Well, you are going to regret that question. Taking a look through the results on DeviantArt gives you a pretty quick idea of what we're looking at here. Small, anthropomorphic animals, usually toddler age, wearing a diaper and shitting themselves. <laughs> that that would sum up baby fur pretty well, I guess. <laughs> there's no, there's no, I don't need a punchline. This, this joke is its own punchline. This thing exists. Baby fur exists. There are people that like this shit. <laughs> Again, that's no pun intended. There's no pun intended on that one. So what... <laughs> How? I don't know how we're going to do this. I'm going to be honest with you. Let's just, let's jump into some art. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just, we'll just jump right in. And what better place to start than a, a community, a group on DeviantArt that I think really encapsulates what this is all about. Forced baby furs. That's baby fur furry. Anthro forced. I want you to get a nice highlighted view of that because this is what we're diving into. I'll read the, uh, the group's info for you. This group is for art, and stories of furries forced diapered, or babied against their will, or about to be. Anything that does not fit one of these categories will be removed, no warnings. If you wish to add human, art, add ears, and or a tail to your work, and it can stay. If you don't like the rules, don't join and don't post here. This group is to be enjoyed and not contaminated with art or stories that aren't for this group. Everyone is welcome to join, but mistreat this group, and you will be removed and blocked. If you have any problems, you can respectfully, respectfully, message me at bungiebunny.deviantart.com. Now, before any of you decide to run out and take a look at this group, just be warned, you will forever be shamed with having your name put on their wall. I can never wash this away. <laughs> it's like being on the sex offender <laughs> registry. There's, I can't make this go away. Everybody can see it now. I'm kind of fucked. But you know what catches my attention more than me being in a, a criminal database for the rest of my life now is that little guy down there. Look at that. Look at that distraught little face. That looks like pure pain and suffering down in the galleries. Let's, um, let's, yeah, focus right in there. Let's take a look at that. Our group's mascot, Snippy the Bunny. Well, how can I resist? Clearly, this is going to be fantastic art. I think we're all in for a treat. Simply stunning. Nothing captures the essence of suffering more than this poor, poor, abused rabbit. Now, if you pay close attention, you should notice something's <laughs> missing from this. And no, it's not his dignity or freedom. A commenter seemed to clue in on it. Where are his hands? <laughs> well, I think I can answer that question for you, Nutty. Clearly, they've been cut off. Because if he still... By the way, if you want to get a laugh and a good way to start all this, right here. ...at his hands, he would try to suffocate himself to escape this fucking living nightmare of having a, a diaper strapped to his ass. Five years from now, seven years from now, there's going to be a dead little bunny in the meadow that's handless <laughs> and has a diaper stuck to it. That's all that's going to be left is a little pile of bones and a pair of pampers. Continuing <laughs> the theme of sick fuckery, here we've got a, a rabbit, an anthropomorphic rabbit with a diaper strapped to its ass in a straitjacket, why not, in some kind of a contraption, a treadmill. It's like they took uh, one of the extra scenes, one of the bonus scenes from a Saw movie, and decided, fuck it, let's make it into a picture. You know, one of those talked about traps that they didn't really have the budget for. Here we see how it would have worked. There's a little key on there. They're taunting it. Here's your freedom. Come and get it. But what I like the most about this is not the actual picture itself. It's this fucking comment from a now-deleted account. This picture gives me an idea. Well, this comment gives me an idea. You know, you know, this is the first referral to Slender Man. <laughs> And I just want to ask Jim, is it, is this you? <laughs> is this you? <laughs> I don't want to be laughing if this, if this is you. Um, don't worry, there's also a teddy in here. Idea that I should probably look through the backlog of Amber Alerts for something that specifically happened on May 29th or May 30th of 2012. <laughs> That's the idea I get from your fucking creepy comment. But of course, this DeviantArt group engages in far more than simple pictures. They're also writers. So let's take a look at some of their literature, because there was a gallery for that too. So allow me to read for you. 
Pokemon's Embarrassment RP from Karth 3 on October 8th, oh, 2014. God. I am a teenager who has been mistaken for a baby due to my small size and diaper. I was sent to the daycare mistaken for a small child. You are my father who has been searching for this me all worse. day. You decide to continue the baby treatment I got in the daycare to make sure I don't wander off again. You take me shopping for all the stuff. You buy a playpen, many toys, a crib, a pacifier, baby reins, some baby clothes, and very thick disposable diapers. After we check out, you take me home. I'm protesting all the way. What first? So they've really upped the game. This isn't just a straightforward piece of literature. This is interactive. Interactive in the seven fucking pages of comments that are directly below it, filled with some of the most absurd shit you're ever going to read. But let me give you a highlight. Buys the dragon. Yes, you are. As far as I and that daycare are concerned, you are still a baby. Don't feel bad. In dragon years, <laughs> you are really just a baby anyway. Tries to undo the safety belt. Don't even think about it. It's childproof. 16. Which in dragon years is just over one. Grr. Don't give me that attitude. Is your diaper clean? Lay off, Dad. Mardozer725. I'm gonna be the kid, if that's okay. Fine. <laughs> Female Grovel tries to rip her diaper off. You can't. She growls and tries to slice at it with Leaf Blade. No effect as you feel the need to go. Daddy, please pull over. I need to go, she said. Well, isn't that just riveting? I think we all really enjoy a choose-your-own-adventure stories, especially in the comment section of a role-playing game involving you shitting into a diaper. And that's how I want to spend this at <laughs> The fact that this gets, this is applicable. This, this is research, people. This is fucking research, okay? Friday night. Thank you so much, Forced Baby Fur. What a great group you've got going. And of course, it wouldn't be possible without the main guy himself, Bungie Bunny. And just taking a look at that page, I'm sure your, your eye is drawn to the photo album he has on the right-hand side entitled Humiliation. I wonder what sort of pictures, what wonders we'll find if we take a look through here. There are so many things wrong with this photo. That's a <laughs> fucking black cat or a cougar, and it looks like he wants to murder this bitch. And she's dressed it in a little dress and little frilly socks and mittens and put a massive fucking diaper on it and then shoved a pacifier <laughs> in its mouth. Here's one I like to call Koala Autopsy. Because it looks like it's begging for death. Just just grab the scalpel and end it. Some son of a bitch has put a diaper on me and I just can't take it anymore. I've smelled like shit for three and a half weeks now. Just fucking put an end to it. I don't even know how to describe this one. It's a very angry bear with a little itty bitty pacifier in its mouth and a baby bib and a giant piss-soaked, shit-soaked diaper. And look at the autism on that one. Just look at that face. If anybody in this picture should be wearing a diaper, my money would be on them, oh my not God. on Mr. Grumpy, but on her. <laughs> it's not just the owner. Looking through the membership roster of this particular group leads to some really great pictures, <laughs> such as this. It, I don't... I'm not sure what this is. Is it a lizard? Is it a cat? Is it a furry lizard? It's got Sephiroth hair. It looks very distraught, shitting itself silly, while mechanical hands pamper it. And it looks to be tied to the crib. And this looks like what you'd find in John Wayne Gacy's house, buried under the floor. For some reason, this person's put it in a nice, bright, colorful room. All one monotonous blue tone, except the red door. It's almost like they're taunting it. You'll never escape. You're stuck here forever. Changing Time by Ben the Fox 1000. Artist, Nate Muse. Hee hee hee! I want that to be me. Yes, it would appear that this group in particular has its finger on the pulse of the baby fur community. Whether they're drawing it or writing about it, or even just favoriting pictures. And they are favoriting pictures. Let me let me show you a few of the related things that I've come across. Well, looking at this specific group, words almost fail to describe it. To take it the magnificence <laughs> of this photo, I want you to imagine yourself as a seven-year-old child sitting in the movie theater with your parents, and you're watching Bambi. And then out of nowhere, in the back of your sugar-rattled little mind, an epiphany hits you. You know what would make this better? Diapers. Let's put diapers on fucking everybody. The skunk gets a diaper. The bunny gets a diaper. Bambi and Bambi's little sister gets a diaper. Fuck it. Put a diaper on Bambi's dad. Now, of course, any adult that would hear you express that opinion would probably look at you and say, are you fucking psychotic? You can't capture a deer and put diapers on it. It will kick you to death. It will gore you with its fucking horns. It's not going to let that happen. Those antlers are going to go right up your ass, Billy, if you try to do that to Bambi's dad. I like to call this Stockholm Syndrome by diaper. If you focus in, you can see what the observer is supposed to notice about this magnificent piece of artwork. Those eyes. They are begging for help. His arms are probably <laughs> shattered. And it looks like he has a tail off to the back right. I don't remember Care Bears having tails. But fuck it, let's add one anyway. His arms are broke. He's not going to fight us on it. Just stitch it onto his ass and watch that heart shatter in half. It looks like she's trying to line that little deer baby up as a fucking pool cue. <laughs> like she's going to use his diapered ass to knock the eight ball in the far right corner pocket. This would be a great example of insanity. 
if deers were anthropomorphic and inclined to put diapers on and then took their children to pool holes and used them to bat around the balls. <laughs> now, during my magical adventure through the forced baby fur deviant art group, I looked at their membership roster and the things they favorite, all the different pictures and all the different... All right, all right. We're going to... We're coming up on the... We're coming up on the spoiler, but... I'm going to let this keep going. Stories, and there's quite a bit of stories up. Quite quite a lot of literature. And all the role-playing, which is pretty much par for the course for any cringy shit you're going to find on DA. There's going to be about 30 people in the comments wanting to RP colon 3 with you. But then I stumbled on a very special account. It was so special, in fact, that I'm splitting this episode up. It's going to be continued in episode 4 next week. Next Friday, there's going to be more. Now, you may be asking yourself, what was so special about this account? Well, taking a look at Toddler Girl... Okay... And I know, I know that nobody in any way, shape, or form is going to link this shit together. Again, I linked this shit together by listening to a bunch of fucking shit from these goddamn people bitch and moan about stuff. And I heard them bitch and moan about how a certain person was outed by Medicare. Okay? We're getting there. Messmaker Extraordinaire, a 35-year-old female from the United Kingdom. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Well, out of the ordinary for these crazy fucking people. I mean, they do have 301 pages of a comic book about furries shitting themselves. But when you take a look at the bigger picture, suddenly it becomes clear. It would appear that there's quite a bit of crossover between baby fur lovers, the people that like anthropomorphic rabbits shitting in diapers, and age play people who are adults that like to pretend they're toddlers who shit themselves. So with that in mind, I'd like you to join me next week as we continue off, kind of bookend this extraordinary saga of shitting in diapers for part four, Big Boys Make Boom Booms too. <laughs> Oh, God. We're almost there. The big reveal is coming up, I promise. And the craziest thing about it is, these people are not the worst. This is just the appetizer. The main course is coming up because the worst people Here we are, are the diaper lover community. The people that I briefly, briefly touched on at the very end of episode three. The people that flag a video. The people that threaten me with lawsuits, with the police arresting me, with having my channels and social media accounts shut down. That's how mad they were because of the previous video you watched. But there was one member that stood out from the crowd. And sent me death threats because of nine seconds of audio at the end of one video. <laughs> Episode number four already. Can you believe it? Now, this is a continuation from last time. Now, I did say I'd get that part up on Saturday or Sunday. I probably should have specified the year and the month. But it is a Sunday, so I'm technically right, which is the best kind of right you can be. Now, last time we left off talking about doodle diapers and for no good reason how they were autistic and the reaction they had to the video series. But they weren't the core of the issue. No, they were upset and they whined about it and they threw a bit of a temper tantrum about it. But as far as reactions go, the reaction we're going to be covering now is by far much, much, much more autistic. I'm talking about the diaper jihad that was declared on my channel. And what, what exactly set that diaper jihad <laughs> off? I mean, if you listen to that, that closing part of the last episode, I said nine seconds of video. Nine seconds of video was enough to mobilize an entire community to flip the fuck out. Well, that would be in relation to this. This particular image, which is a screen capture of a DeviantArt user profile, a public profile. I want to be very, very clear about what we're going to be talking about here. This is a publicly viewable profile on a public website. But that was enough. That was enough to start into motion a giant shitstorm, which is fitting because <laughs> this entire episode deals with giant shitstorms and what they're contained in. I'm talking about the adult baby diaper lover community, the ABDL. Now, if you wanted to ensure that your significant other left you immediately upon finding this in your browser history, and we're going to go on to DeviantArt and search up ABDL, you'd find 19,978 results. That's adult baby diaper lover. And I can personally attest to the fact that these people are very serious about mm. this. They employ the method acting version of fetishism because they are giant fucking babies. That is exactly how they All right, I don't want to keep watching more. We're just going to stop it there. I'm just going to spoil the fun for everybody. But the person that is being talked about in this is, uh, is somebody that's been around the art community for a while, actually. 
um, somebody that's significant to this drama, and that somebody is not creep show art. Although they are also tied to this drama. They are also tied to this story. They are also significant in this story because they are tied to Hopeless Peaches, who is not the person that I was talking about. The person that got really tied up and got made fun of by uh, by good old Medicar there would be Doodle Tones. Doodle Tones. Doodle Tones is uh, a very interesting, a very interesting person. Um, we're just going to play a beginning of a video so you can kind of see their caricature. This video talks about some controversial and potentially triggering topics. Viewer discretion is advised. I feel like I've been saying this a lot in recent videos, but I am so tired. So after addressing Mad Libs trying to throw me under the bus and coming to terms with the fact that I was groomed into behaviors, so we're actually going to watch this video at some point with this because I feel like this it's impossible to cover Lyle Convoy peaches in one stream. I'm going to be dead honest with you. This is not we're going to have to cut this off at some point. It's early in the evening. It's only 1030. I'm not looking at ending anytime soon. Is just understand that there is literally so much content and these people are so fucking full of themselves that this takes me two fucking streams to go all over all of this shit. But this muttering person that you hear right now is Doodle Tones. Doodle Tones is one of a couple main players that you're gonna you're gonna hear brought up in this, okay? So to give you an idea, our main our main players here, okay? We have uh, Peaches, obviously featured on the thumbnail. Um, Peaches is a, um, kind of a stuck up bitch that, uh, is no longer a bitch. So, you know, and the one thing we're also going to touch on here, preface, in case I miss gender or anything here, um, these people like to scorch their accounts and their gender every time something happens. So she's become he's, he's become she's, or they become they's, or them's, and honestly, there's, it happens so much, and it literally happened in the middle of all of this, to the point that, in an apology, somebody had shifted already from going from a she to a now he, and that previous she now he is Peaches. Um, Peaches is now a, a identifying as male, um, but they're, they're somebody who, they're the person who has the most, uh, deep rooted ties with kind of drama and stuff. And it stems from them back from the creep show art days. And I've got a quick little video that we'll play to kind of, kind of start stuff off. And it goes all the way back to the beginning times. Back when Bo Blacks was just a an up and coming person, and he uh, he worked with a, a bigger creator at the time. I, I don't know if necessarily bigger, but I'm just gonna be pedantic. Um, just a robot, and they put together this uh, video on creep show art, and it, it actually does a very good job of covering uh, not just creep show art and kind of giving like a a. A refresher in that because creep show art again is momentarily involved in this um but gives you a good preface for peaches in the early years now bad look at all of those red numbers i've not seen this many people unsub from a channel in a very long time she is so cancelled that when i type her name into the search bar i can't even find her channel it's just all exposed videos but the important question is how did this happen and the answer to that is rather surprising as this entire cancellation of a youtuber with half a million subscribers for the most part originated from a twitter account with less than 700 followers called dish soap 1234 on june 4th they tweeted out i've seen some people ask about the creep show art law Lolcow drama. This is a thread. Shannon has been posting on Lolcow, a gossip site about influencers, since at least 2018. She was posting anonymously, but admins outed her as punishment for pretending to be her own fans and haters. They then show a post from the admins that say, as many users in this thread. This website was, uh, was lolcow.farm. You can kind of see it down there. Um, this is kind of notoriously tied 
to the creep show art story uh, if you search creep show art you will inevitably find this but this uh this drama and this cancellation of peaches is actually or cancellation of peaches sorry getting ahead of myself this cancellation of creep show art is actually way after the initial run-in with peaches as you're gonna find out thread are aware. Shannon's posts on LolCow haven't exactly been subtle. We've decided to compile her post history after she escalated her behavior by sharing her sister's social media in order to deflect criticism towards herself. Beyond that, she has been anonymously promoting her videos and Patreon slash YouTube memberships to farmers, and making posts about herself to either White Knight- So, this is- this is kind of a, uh, n not to- not to keep Paws Andy in here, but, uh, I, I will let this play. But, um, this is also kind of another thing that you hear about around this time, um, Flamenco also, you're going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to tie shit into the beginning of the stream. Flamenco was also, amongst being a VTuber, um, he also was a person who was known to be on different boards talking to himself. Literally, like multiple accounts, signing in and out, having conversations, talking to himself about himself. Or insult herself. This is the, the female version of that with Creepshow Art here talking to herself. And she even she even went as far as having haters. Um, I don't know if uh, Flamenco ever went as far as creating haters. I know he had he had supporters, but for many years we've had a policy to reveal. Nonetheless, they were all him. Who go to great lengths to use lolcow.farm to propel their own online presence. You can read the full post history here. And oh boy, there are a lot of posts. Almost 300 to be exact, dating from the end of 2018 all the way up to as recently as last April. Obviously, with that many posts, I'm not going to read them all out here. But if you want me to make a separate video of me reading them all in the future, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. A lot of the comments she made on this forum were just kind of weird, negative, but strange comments. Not really huge deals, but just kind of weird. Like her saying Edwin's generations is being fake straight and is actually gay not the biggest insult in the world but definitely some weird speculation and who knew creep show art was the fucking rasputin of the goddamn <laughs> all of this shit by the way <laughs> like i'm just gonna throw that out there you know who rasputin is let's just say creep show art's a fucking rasputin strange thing to say behind his back considering they're friends but then we have more malicious messages from creep show art like when she talked about hopeless peaches someone that she has made very negative videos on in the past in this post she says hopeless peaches definitely hits me as someone who just sits on their ass and whines instead of trying to change things i used to watch some of her vids about a year ago about her horrible living situation and past things and every problem seemed to just be i couldn't be bothered to do something so now i'm gonna cry about it on youtube like if it wasn't a big enough issue for you to do shit then obviously it wasn't a problem for you you were just blowing it out of proportion now so you can get internet sympathy points so let me get this straight this girl goes around befriending youtubers rips off their content says exactly what they say in less interesting ways and then after that person puts them on their channel and asks for their followers to follow this clone she turns into a bitch what a fucking cow i want to figure out who else she has done this to because how she talks it can't just be shannon this is disgusting now these messages are kind of ironic considering that creep show art's main criticism of hopeless peaches in her videos about her is that they were friends and hopeless peaches talk shit about her behind her back which is exactly what she's doing to her right here but admittedly i have not kept up to date on the helpless peaches stuff when it was all going down so i thought i'd bring on a certain robot to help by the way this is png tubers png right here not vtubers this is all png explain this a little more it's so nice being in a video with someone who's part of the autistic master race Hey everybody, I'm just a robot. You might know me as the Hopeless Peaches guy. Once LolCow leaked all their messages, I immediately knew it was Creepshow Art because she was talking negatively about Hopeless Peaches long before Prism 8 Luke's video came out. Prism 8 Luke's video on Hopeless Peaches was the first one and Creepshow Art's video only came out a few days afterwards. As far as I'm aware, Creepshow Art wasn't talking negatively about Hopeless Peaches in public. So there's no way this Amy person could have possibly known about this drama beforehand. Creepshow Art claimed that Hopeless Peaches was racist because she had a disagreement with a black person. That she was talking shit behind her back with no evidence. Her Hopeless Peaches video quickly became the sixth most popular video on her channel. I would also like to take the time to dispel a rumor. No, me and Hopeless Peaches are not dating. She lives on the other side of the planet and has a boyfriend. But I can understand why some people might have come to that conclusion. Oh boy, this guy dodge a bullet. And it's perfectly all right to ask questions about things like this. But no, me and Hopeless Peaches are not an item. But to me, the worst thing she's done to Hopeless Peaches is when she claimed that Hopeless Peaches doxed her by giving out her private phone number to random strangers. She came to this conclusion because Peaches gave them a few Instagram posts that didn't have her phone number in it. She just jumped to that conclusion. 
Hopeless Peaches emailed Creepshow Art just asking her to take that one part out. By the way, this was in her second Hopeless Peaches video, mind you, not the first one. You can check her pinned comment underneath the video for proof. The pinned Okay, and I'm going to pause right here. Um, so to give some context, because I, I may have not given enough context going into this. Um, Hopeless Peaches and Creepshow Art uh, were all members of a larger art community. Uh, this art community, you know, just like any other community, um, people are always coming up certain and you got your big figureheads and whatnot. So creep show art during this time was a larger figurehead in the community. Prison late prison mate Luke was also a larger figurehead in the community. Harley TBS was also a large figurehead in the community. All these people um, eventually kind of turned on Peaches, and they turned on Peaches because what had happened was uh, the creep show art, I think, approached Peaches about doing a collab together. She saw Peaches artwork, said, hey, you're pretty good. Let's do a collab video together, and they did that. Well, the art that was generated from that collab video, um, I guess... Creepshow art took and used to make uh, merchandise and did not uh, consult with Peaches on this. Well, that apparently pissed in Peaches Cheerios and she got pretty upset about it. Well, this led to a little bit of a back and forth. That's what was outlined in those messages by those people at the beginning of this that that uh josh was going over so those messages back and forth that leaked from cow talking about peaches are creep show art talking about peaches and the situation that happened she then goes on to make a video after prison mate luke prison mate luke's video is out before this but I don't know where that falls in the timeline of these messages. It's kind of hard to disseminate things backwards, especially seeing Creepshow Art is completely gone from all of all of the YouTube. Um, so that kind of gives you a good idea. But basically, uh, yeah, um, Creepshow Art made a couple of videos on Peaches, and Peaches kind of um, more or less approached kind of humbly like saying hey look you made a video on me calling out her drama could you uh could you at least like go ahead and remove some of this personal information from the video and it was actually her second video on peaches that she was requesting this information to be removed from so that kind of catches you up to where we're at now the comment should have really been an apology or at least explained that her and hopeless peaches were no longer fighting Thanks for letting me on your channel, Bo Blacks. No problem, dude. Although I'm pretty disappointed that you and Hopeless Peaches aren't dating. <laughs> I don't know why he said that. I literally just asked him to explain the situation and he mentioned that. I don't know. Had no idea that was like a frequently asked question. And so Just a Robot is actually a fantastic resource in all of this. Uh, he has, he, his channel is, from what I can tell, is still pretty, pretty good. I got quite a bit of information from Just a Robot. Just a robot. Uh, but there is some allegations that come up later. But just a robot is, as you can see, even up to six days ago, still making content. Um, Let's sing a song. Holy, yeah. holy crap. Holy crap. Um, But if you dig through their history, just a robot has a lot of good information on... Um, basically the whole art community as well as like some of the dramas that have come up uh specifically hopeless peaches and um their drama with uh creep show art uh harley tbs prison mate luke it, it's uh there's a lot of these tie-ins together that i'm gonna be honest um as you can see like i listened to his video on prison mate luke there wasn't a lot of like necessarily tied in things um to what's going on and what we're going over but as you can also see look again there's doodle tones um you know if you pay attention enough throughout these videos and you've been unfortunate enough to listen to enough things related to this drama 
you will see certain people like uh, Turkey Tom is even brought up in this. Our community, there was a big falling out and drama involving Turkey Tom. Um, creep show art, obviously. Um, there's Hopeless Peaches. And this is another drama um, that involved Hopeless Peaches. There's been a couple dramas. So, um it just, the best way to put it is that Hopeless Peaches has been around for a long time. Um, Doodle Tones has also been around for a long time. They were both uh, very much involved with the art community. Um, they've had their share of dramas in the past that were involved with the art community. And one of these dramas kind of led to... Um, a meeting of people and that was uh peaches and lyle convoy so let's get into that portion let's sing a song oh my god i freaking hate that creep show art is now bad look at all of those red numbers okay. i've not seen this many we can pause this okay so from here where are we gonna go um do we go to just the current drama? Because that would probably be the quickest way. Um, you know, just for just for a little bit more tone. Um, just a robot creep show art. This kind of was a pretty decent video as far as like giving a good uh clarification. Trust there. issues confirmed. The art commentary community is terrible, and this is fucking why. You know, it is possible that Peaches didn't vent to Manga Common. It's also possible that that might have happened, but it just slipped his mind. Now, could Manga Kamen be lying? Of course, but he can't really prove a negative. Until there is evidence that Manga Kamen is lying, I'm not going to think he is. Before she posted about why it's okay for her to be shitty and mean to a 16-year-old because they were mean to her first in DMs, which, oh, okay, nobody is saying you can't shit on a person who's 10 years younger than you, but the fact that you think that's an efficient use of your time is a bit odd. Like, you're willingly spending so much time doing this, but all right. I mean, it could be worse. She could have done what Prism A. Luke did and did multiple videos on a 16-year-old and lied about them saying they defended Lollicon and they excused all the actions of a sexual predator. I'm not saying this disproves your points about Peaches. I'm just saying I want us to have some consistency in the commentary community. Same way, her editing the script for Just a Robot, Manga Commons, and Future Butter's terrible video about Omni and... Okay, and so... um. I'm going to give a little more preface here because I'm just going to try and feed you guys. So like give you a good basis for everything. So you heard him talking about the commentary community and you might be thinking, okay, well, you're listening to somebody who's a smaller creator of the commentary community. You may listen to other creators of the commentary community like Nick Diorio or maybe stuff that Xylee does, or maybe some of, uh, oh god whoever your favorite creator may be okay and so you're like well i've never heard of these people before that's because they're part of what's called the uh acc the art commentary community um which is not to be confused with something that will be brought up later on which is the scc uh, the SCC is the slideshow commentary community. These are both part of art commentary, um, but slideshow is honestly what you're kind of watching right here, where um, just different things are brought in and bits of information. Um, just a robot is actually part of the art commentary community, where what you're watching with Harley TBS is more slideshow commentary community here hi is her being involved and in influencing their video which you cannot argue it's not of course you can actually and so there's also a couple different figureheads of these different um drama communities so to speak commentary communities right so the slideshow commentary community is kind of their biggest figurehead is doodle tones okay so now we have our plan from there and doodle tones is big with uh the, the slideshow commentary community she is she has a history that we're going to go over where she's done a lot of uh fetish art um 
which ties into our video with Mr. Medicare. Um, she is specifically tied to the fetishes of baby diaper furs. Um, so also furry anthropomorphic stuff. Um, and then we have Peaches. Peaches is more your typical art commentary where if you watch it, there's kind of, it got big with the uh, um, story time type of stuff with uh, these uh these young girls predominantly would would draw and kind of go over a life story or something um, just as they draw up their characters. Okay, so that's where Peaches comes in. And then there's uh, Omnia, who is somebody else tied to this, who is outside of the spectrum of the Senate, Lyo, and these other people. She's actually a person for... For good, I guess you could say in this respect, but they've got conflicts going all the way back to these days, where they're uh, they're kind of against, um, they're kind of against the 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 grain here. Not as bad as um, as Harley TBS, Prison Mate, Luke, and Creepshow Art were. Um, those were the old heads that kind of get taken down. Um, another person you'll hear brought up is Kai. Kai is also tied to some of this more current stuff. Um, and then uh, Queen Serafina is going to be another individual you'll hear tied to all this stuff. Um, everyone in the... Yeah. <laughs> They're on a spectrum, that's for sure. <laughs> And there's a couple different spectrums that they're on. Um, all of this stuff gets tied together. So these, the SCC, the ACC, um, they've all had their different people um, who kind of have been figureheads and gone after different people um, as far as like... I'm trying to think of how to say this, like PDF hunters. Um, and there's a long history there uh, to give you an idea. One of the ACC PDF hunters that is going to play a large, a, um, a larger role in all of this is someone called uh, Cass Warfox. Cass Warfox comes kind of in later on. Um, he helps in exposing some other people that um, are involved in all of this, uh, but he runs something called the Fox Mafia. I'm not kidding when I make this shit up. Like, I'm giving you high level of all of this. You have no idea the torture that I've been put through to understand all of this. Okay? Well... Um, there's also some other very, very, very interesting people that I, I, I wanted to surprise you guys with. Um, so we have, we have creep show art. That was kind of one of the special guests. We had Mr. Medicare. He's very much a special guest tied into this. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna watch a video on one other person that I need you guys to have context with um, that it, it's not, it's he's tied in with one other person who has also already been mentioned. Uh, hold on. Let me type this out. And uh, the, the, the art community had a problem with this person. So, um, and in the respect of, I'm talking about Turkey Tom here, Turkey Tom, uh, in the art community kind of went to war at one point, but within this war, there are, there are even worse people. Let's just say that, um, trying to find, yep. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you watch a video here. It's it's one of Turkey Tom's shorter videos, but again, preface, I don't want to ruin this, and I see that my timestamp is bumped up in this, so oh goodness. So I'm gonna mute really quick. Open the video. 
And so now that blasted my ears thoroughly, but you guys probably didn't hear anything. And so now we're at the start of this. Um, and I just, I'm taking away all the precursors so you don't know who this is about. All right. And ready in three, two, you should have volume back now. And I'm going to bring the video on screen. And hit play. And I want to clear the air and say that for the record. Oh no, oh no, oh no, you got volume, but I put it on the wrong tab. Now it's on screen. I am a zoophile. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? The following video is going to contain some of the most disturbing content I have ever talked about on my channel. I'd argue probably more than any video I've ever done. I will delve into some very dark topics in detail, and it is certainly not for the faint of heart. So proceed with caution. Thank you. The internet opens up the opportunity for a lot of different communities to converge online. It's a place where unorthodox people from unorthodox backgrounds can use technology to form their own little corner of the world. Sounds innocent. Unfortunately, this also includes groups who rally around justifying some very disgusting acts and beliefs. And in extreme cases, some people online go beyond basic disgust to be genuinely morally- I've got to play this because I need you to understand for later context just the type of individual we're talking about with this. Reprehensible. For most of those involved, the furry community has become a way to indulge in a relatively innocent hobby. However, some among their ranks have expressed a genuine sexual attraction to the very animals that the entire fandom revolves around. Meet hypnotist Sappho, someone whose name has become very well known on sites like TikTok and YouTube for their outspoken beliefs on this topic. So I'm pretty sure that most furries who have seen any video about this hypnotist Sappho person know what has been going on. Sappho's YouTube videos throughout And so yes, hypnotist Sappho is a VTuber um in a sense VR like I, they did this VR chat. I would call them a VTuber, you'll see why. Um but they're they're a zoo file and then there's also going to be a discussion of zoo sadism uh, which is uh, basically an exceptional cruelty to animals with the uh explicit um involvement of getting your rocks off uh this stuff is really depraved shit okay i'm not gonna play this whole video I don't really want to play this whole video, but I just want you to get kind of the initial context and who better than Turkey fucking Tom to explain the hypnotist Sappho portion of this. 2021 featured VR chat hypnosis, during which she would mock hypnosis practices within the realm of a 3D simulation. Her channel went relatively unnoticed until an upload from September 2021 titled Coming Out About Things. At almost 40 minutes in length, this video is her coming out about her sexual attraction to dogs. Even beyond a simple confession, she also attempted to justify the abuse of animals. I, I'm just not going to give the opportunity for a Sappho exposed kind of video. And, and that's the VTuber. I would rather suck the air. That's the VTuber the stuff that I'm talking about right here. Sonas, and instead of letting this sort of thing build, just be open and honest ab about myself and my beliefs. I am a zoophile. You did not mishear that. I am a zoophile. I do not have a thing for humans. I am. And so, um, I'm gonna just stop it there. <laughs> Honestly, because we got so much shit to go through. Um, this this is Sappho. Sappho is a trans woman, and she is a, obviously, as you heard, a zoophile. She's also into zoo sadism. Um, is another key player in all of this, who is eventually comes into play with the Kaz Warfox stuff later on, but also someone specifically tied to Lyle Convoy. 
um, and his Senate server, and is also one of the key figurehead people, uh, person that is involved here, is one of the um, key uh, key people. They get kind of caught up in with uh, with Sappho here. And uh, they get outed by Castle Warfox, so that's kind of how that comes all full circle. And it, it's one of the big controversies before all the recent stuff that makes Lyle look bad. Um, so you've got your the players so far, just keeping everybody on track. Lyle, fat guy, Texas, plays with the fucking models, is a, uh, a self-proclaimed... Thundercats historian um, models his whole persona after uh, a Japanese version of Beast Wars. Um, is actually been taking pictures in a in a in a first costume of it. Basically, it's awful. I'll spare you. If you've been on anything like now recording, you've seen the picture. Um, then you got Peaches. Peaches, our community. She was one of those. Uh, draw and tell kind of people giving you the breakdowns then you've got doodle tones doodle tones was more on the fetish side of stuff and deviant art side of stuff and is a true fucking deviant um becomes a figurehead in the senate peaches becomes a figurehead in the senate the senate is set up by lyo um we will have a a spout a uh, spat later on with sappho who is on screen right now. Sappho is a zoo sadist and a uh, zoophile and also a furry and is another just generally weird individual. Um, that person it has a thing with someone in the Senate uh, who I've not named yet, but they go by the name Coyote Lovely. They are also a figurehead. They're pretty close with uh, Lyo, and um, they get outed by a Kaz Warfox. Um, we will also have a couple other individuals uh, you'll hear mentioned is Ephraim. Ephraim or Ephraim is uh, kind of just this nerdy, loud, fucking opinionated dude. I couldn't really find a whole lot on him. Didn't really want to look a whole lot. He's he's not really said a whole lot. Um. And then there will be a, one other individual that's kind of going to come up later on that's also a, a zoophile. Um, I, I don't want to I don't want to ruin things, but the things get really interesting. And then um, there's also uh, Queen Serafina. Queen Serafina is also another figurehead in the Senate. That is uh, again run by Lyle or Lyle Convoy. I almost said Lyle Pancakes. Jesus Christ, Lyle Convoy. Uh, so Queen Serafina, um, Queen Serafina also has a a run in with what becomes one of Lyle Convoy's slash the Senate's biggest like rivalries and potentially. Potentially could be uh, given the linchpin as to being part of the current day drama. Um, and that would be a, a an individual who is honestly a troll. And it, and that's I've asked him to his face and he says, yep, I, that's what I would consider myself as a troll. And this person goes by the name of Gilded Pooh. And beyond that, I'm trying to think, make sure we've got everybody here like i said we got a big cast of characters in this um nope nope we haven't gotten everybody um if you've been around the commentary community for a minute you may have heard of an individual by the name of kai weiss kai weiss or uh now goes by zay zay and uh the senate have also been feuding for quite a while um we have the turkey tom connection uh, there is also a Keffel's connection that will eventually come up with all this. Um, bear with me. I'm just reading through, making sure I got everybody now. 
So we got Cass Warfox, we've got Queen Seraphina, we've got Kaiwise slash Zay, we've got Coyote Lovely, who I've mentioned, um, Sappho, uh, Ephraim, who could care less about, Doodle Tones, uh, Doodle Tones would be tied to the Medicare side of stuff, Peaches, Peaches is tied to the art side of stuff, uh, Lyle Convoy, who was tied to coming up with basically kind of the art side with he's a model builder but also just enjoys enjoyer of anime um the anime crowd kind of makes an appearance in all of this as well uh so i think that's our main cast of characters so what i'm now going to go on to show you is a little bit more history on how did we get here? Why are we here? Why are we talking about these people? Who the fuck cares? Okay. So we got a creep show. We've got uh Lyo, who I've kind of I've I've introduced you by name, but I've not introduced you by persona. Um, we're gonna get to that. Oh, Akumo and Kumo. Uh two different individuals that we're also going to get into eventually. Um, Akumo, I believe, was actually in the Senate at one point. Uh, I don't know if Kumo was, but Akumo is kind of like a young medicare like uh, individual that you'll you'll hear about. Uh, he was also known because he convinced a girl to, um, or no, sorry, 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 right. wrong, wrong Kumo. Akumo is is tied in with all the Senate stuff and everything else. Kumo, who is another individual, um, was involved with a girl uh, with some drama year previous or so, uh, where he uh, tried to convince said girl to carve his name into her be herself uh, because his name was only four letters versus the five letters that. Uh, that she was going to carve of somebody else's name. Um, our very own Leia something has, I, I have to give her a shout out because she has really dug into this and gotten a lot of good information. Um, she has also put me down a couple rabbit holes of information. Um, there's probably a couple other people that I'm forgetting. Um, as we come to them, I'll bring them up. But what I want to cover right now is the FCK. The FCK, which is the Fruitcake Server. Okay? Like, literally, like, the thing nobody wants to eat at Christmas, Fruitcake Server. Okay? This is kind of the center point of a lot of drama. This server... Um, Leia has been insane in her coverage. Yeah. I can't see how she can wade through it all. I did a bit and that was enough for me. Yeah. I I honestly don't blame you. Um, I mean, listening to me, listen to how deep I am, and I am still mountains behind Leia on understanding all of this. Um so the FCK server, this is the Discord server. So a lot of this is going to go back to discords and different things, but FCK is a discord server where a couple of these people that are in Senate were also in. Um, there is also another discord called the barrel, uh, which I'm not even going to attempt to get into because nothing related to this drama happens in the barrel. Just know that when I give you context, if you hear the barrel being brought up, it's just another Discord server. Um, but the FCK server, uh, the fruitcake server, is kinda kind of like a shit posty kind of uh bullshitty kind of server. It's maybe where these people can maybe let their hair down a little bit more. Um and so I think this covered it, didn't stop it pretty well, obviously to start over there is a discord server more disgusting than most normal people will ever see a server filled with so much porn and suffering 
No man could ever dream of it. Which Can you guys hear that okay? It's kind of quiet, their intro here, but it, it actually gives a bit of context, which is kind of kind of nice so here i'm gonna i'm gonna restart this but i'm gonna mute my mic so that way you don't have all the background noise and that should maybe help there is a discord server more disgusting than most normal people will ever see a server filled with so much porn and suffering no man could ever dream of it. What you are about to witness is a world of horror, where logic and reason no longer make any sense. Where a community sworn to protect children ultimately became the very monsters they swore to destroy. What you are about to witness is a place beyond common sense. You're about to enter the FCK. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, let's do the discussion today. We have a lot to cover. Um, we're going to do the context backstory of the FCK. Um, we're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about. And just to let you know, I'm going to let this play because this is probably one of the biggest key things as far as like giving people background and good information when it becomes a, for what's applicable to this drama. Um, so I need you guys to understand the FCK server very, very, very well. And then we're going to get into understanding Lyo more and his group of uh, his band of merry retards and the shit that they do. And just all the, the just missteps and stupid shit that led up to this and how this guy got away with shit for so long. Especially when I start showing you some of the other stuff later on, like you're really, it, it will probably make your blood boil and I, I'm going to cover it in full, which I've seen very few people do. Um, but there's going to be things like the Rosa call, which if you've looked into this drama at all, you may have come across the Rosa call is awful, but then I've got even more context for you. So I'm going to cover this. It's probably not going to be as in-depth as what Leia's done, but hopefully this is enough to get you caught up on the drama and what's going on here to understand who all these people are, what the fuck happened here, how all of this ties, how all of this is like so hard to explain and why it runs so deep. I mean, like I said, we've gone all the way back to 2016 and I've just now gotten you up to kind of the present to understand, but okay. Enough of me rambling. I'm just going to play this fucking video. I'm going to do one change first, though. Uh, this video. There we go. You can see a little better screen. But um, essentially, what's going to happen for today is we're going to first establish what was the FCK, who was a part of it, who were affected, did they know about this, how long was this information known, and everything else in between. The importance of this is because a lot of the situation unfortunately has been derailed and the victims are not not really being paid attention to and a lot of people talking about this unfortunately are not talking about the situation for the victims they are talking about it for their own purposes which i do not like i'm really disgusted that these people suffering are used as a backdrop drop for someone else's argument but you can't really help people online like that so i decided let's turn back the argument back to the victims. Let's give them back their platforms to talk about the situation. Some of them asked me to make this so we could actually talk about what happened with them and what is going on from start to finish. So let's start off by saying this. No, please do not harass the people I'm going to talk about. Please don't. Do not give them a chance to victimize themselves in a situation they have done objectively wrong in. Please, for the love of God. We need these people to be held, like, we need them to be known of what they've done, but if they, they will try to pull being victims in this situation as hard as they fucking can. Do not give them that right, considering what I'm going to show you, because here's unfortunately what happened. A lot of these people engaged in grooming. A lot of them did. And because of that, there are tons of people that have serious problems as a result of it that need therapy and help. I would highly suggest go support the victims that want to be supported right now, like Teddy That Draws. Their Twitter will be linked in the comments. Any other victim that wants support as well, feel 
if you're ready to have that support, feel free to contact me. I will update the comments as well so people can go and support you as well. But there are a lot of people affected by this. There's a lot of people affected. And I would highly suggest as well, um, go subscribe to Thuman. She's another person that's going to be talking about this situation. She has platformed all the victims as far as I know of on her channel. When the video drops, she's going to be telling exactly their stories as she's going to let them talk. And she's going to show everyone exactly as well what they experience from their perspective. I'm the perspective. I'm showing you exactly what happened and the kinds of people these unfortunate children had to endure. That is my goal for the stream is to sh inform you of exactly what the FCK server was, show you exactly what was in that server and show you eventually what happened to these kids but i'm probably going to show you exactly what happened to these kids in the beginning so you understand right off the bat this behavior ended up with children being harmed and they were knowingly harmed so let's start okay apologies so what um what she's going to give in the preface is actually the current day drama um i kind of want to and she really covers it throughout the whole thing. So we're going to just go up front and say, um, this is a server, like I said, that there was a few people from the Senate, uh, which again, it consists of Lyo and his merry band of um, idiots. Um, and their lead idiot would be probably Hopeless Peaches. Uh, Hopeless Peaches, and then... Uh, Doodle Tones, uh, Queen Serafina, uh, Coyote Lovely, Ephraim. I mean, that's kind of like a very vague hierarchy. Um, there's a couple other individuals in there, but those are probably the big uh, primary people. Um, well, some of them are, you're going to see are in this FCK server. And they did some stuff that kind of put minors at risk. Um... <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> it's Teddy doing deep cover ops for commentary. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, this is the Teddy, the Teddy crossover that I'm I'm talking about. Uh but <laughs> Teddy's actually um I, if I remember right, uh one of the the victims in all of this. Um just know that some of the stuff that they did. These people are very big in the communities of hunting down people that are predatory or harmful in some way towards children. Not necessarily in a sexual manner, but more times than not. Um, but these people hunt down people that are like that. And so here they are in their free time or however you want to explain it. And uh, this is the kind of hijinks that they get up to. Start off with some of the evidence I have. Because we have to first establish who our players are in this game. So thankfully for us, there is a person named Fruitcake Leaks. Now, Fruitcake Leaks is Galbium. They're known now because unfortunately some people um, released that information and made them known. I still don't understand the purpose of why for that one, but unfortunately that has happened. So we are going to establish the main people we're going to be talking about. We are going to talk about all of them. This is not every single one of the people that were in the server. They're on a, either a clear list or Galbium, otherwise known as Fruitcake Leaks, completely forgot about them. Now, the people we're going to be discussing today are YouTubers named Miss ZZ, Toasty Vanilla, Hopeless Peaches, the names Junkie, Nezzy Monster, Mad Libs, Father Unholy, Sex Machine. Apologies, my mic would not come off mute there. So, Toasty Vanilla, uh, Hopeless Peaches, uh, da -da -da -da. The main people we're going to be talking about. We are going to talk about all of them. This is not every single one of the people that were in the server. They're on a. Nezzy is another one. Either a clear list or Galbium, otherwise known as Fruitcake Leaks, completely forgot about them. Now, the people we're going to be discussing today are YouTubers named Miss ZZ, Toasty Vanilla, Hopeless Peaches, the names Junkie, Nezzy Monster, Mad Libs, Father Unholy, Sex Machine. I believe Father Unholy is also in the Senate. Machine, Ben the Looney along with a few others okay and so those are those are some of your big ones hopeless peaches is the golden child of uh lyle convoy like literally 
Uh, we'll get into some funnier and creepier shit later on related to them. But uh, just know that this is the golden child is in this server doing things that kind of could be taken and construed as um, uh, putting people or putting putting kids at risk in a way. Now, if you see a name in the fruitcake server, do not automatically assume there's some of the people we're talking about. There's a reason why I'm showing this. Is to, These are the major players in the situation. And I put these ages because, you know, people were in the server having birthdays and stuff. So I put the ages in here so you exactly know how old these people were when this happened. All the people engaging in this were above the age of 18. The oldest was 23. So, yes, here you go. These are the ages of the people that partook. This is their perspective on who the worst ones were. We're going to show you the server so you can decide that yourselves. My opinion, the worst one was objectively Toasty. My opinion, the worst one was objectively Toasty because Toasty was the one that groomed a lot of these kids. And a lot of these people knew. So that's going to bring us to our next point. Who are the children affected? Unfor unfortunately, there's a lot. This is where it's going to get funny, Jim, just for you and I. But it's going to get funny. A lot of children affected in this situation. So let me pull up that screen. So here we go. These are the minors that were in the server that were affected. A lot of these kids were also groomed. Uh, please do not go search for them. A lot of these people don't want to really talk about the situation. That's why their usernames are not in this tweet. I have contacted the vast majority of them. But these are the major players, unfortunately, of the kids that were affected in the situation that need a lot of support. As we mentioned earlier, Teddy. Teddy was barely 16, had just not that long ago turned 16 years old when this incident happened. Teddy, that draws us into chat. Slimmers, otherwise known as Hygen, is going to be another person we're going to talk about, um, unfortunately. But, but they were the youngest one in the server. They're the one we're mainly going to have to end up talking about because they're the person that proves that these people knew there were minors in the server. Because Slimmers was the youngest person in there. Now, Slimmers um, has a history with uh, with the Senate, specifically somebody that I've already mentioned, which would be Coyote Lovely. Coyote Lovely, um, <laughs> that means he's even younger than he worked with Lindsay. <laughs> I wonder if Teddy was ever on Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh man. Teddy's missing out on this one, I'm telling you. It this is his backstory. But anyway, uh sorry, sidetrack. Um Slimmers has a history with specifically Coyote Lovely and the whole uh, Sappho situation and our mystery third person, which we've not mentioned yet, which probably could be mentioned at this point, uh, which is Zacarlo. Zacarlo is a uh, trans male individual. Um, he uh, was kind of getting... Uh, Kind of has a sordid history and it is actually the person that I was talking about that can be tied directly to uh, Keffels, uh, ironically enough. Uh, they've been labeled a Nazi, a zoo sadist, a uh, zoophile. Hold on, I accidentally minimized my, my thing here. They've been associated with the furry raiders. Um, they were in a, a love triangle of sorts is the best way to explain it between um coyote lovely and uh sappho hypnotist sappho uh hypnotist sappho is of course the person that you saw the turkey town video on they are a trans male to female so she uh she coyote lovely who is a male and uh zacarlo who is a trans male um all had this kind of weird um love triangle where coyote lovely and zacarlo had lived together for a while apparently there was a point where uh coyote lovely had a entanglement with uh with zacarlo uh well 
with Zercarlo and with Sappho. Um, Coyote Lovely is the person who is directly aligned with uh, Lyle Convoy. And like I said, they they were kind of their whole big call out was done on Cast Warfox's uh, um, stream in their server, uh, where Cast Warfox kind of laid into him, gave him the uh, third degree, and in that um, the person Slimmers was also in there, um, kind of talking about how. Um, Coyote Lovely had said some less than agreeable things towards them. And now, again, um, you have Slimmers also being kind of... Uh, I don't want to say it this way, but honestly, this is the easiest and quickest way to say it. They were getting victimized by somebody else from the Senate. And that person would be uh, Hopeless Features. Objectively, the youngest fucking person. Um, the next one is Jamesy, Gar, Mimi, Mimu, and Omega. Those ones, I do not know if they want to be discussed publicly, so we're going to just leave them with the names that they're referred to. We're not going to discuss them. But the major two people we're going to talk about are Teddy and Slimmers. Teddy is a very vocal grooming victim from this situation. <laughs> Teddy is a vocal grooming victim. I'm going to be talking to Teddy after this. Uh, yeah, you know... Peaches could have tied him up, but Peaches did burn a lot of bridges with the Lyo thing, so uh, I don't I don't know if they would both have him tied up in a basement. Um, likely, it would be Lyo doing the tying up and keeping kids in the basement, but that's just because of some of the allegations that have come out against him. Uh, thankfully, thanks to his good old buddy uh, and former daughter, Peaches. Yeah, I'm prefacing there a bit. So what's going to happen in this thing is we're going to we're going to first establish these people are pretending like they don't remember. They had no understanding of the server, etc. And we're also going to call out some bad actors in the situation who have objectively failed these kids. And this this is going to be a problem. So first, we're going to establish. Let's first establish these people knew. I'm also going to interrupt. I apologize. One more time. Laka. Um is another person who is intimately tied in with uh with uh the senate and you'll hear them brought up when we get to a specific call um uh, but realistically uh, i think they did a pretty good job and you can tell that they genuinely care from watching this whole video um this person really does care a lot about this uh and and did their best in their own way to try and explain the situation for a lot of people who may not understand that they were minors in the server why do i know this because i have a video of them talking about slimmers and and so we're gonna show the video just so you all can get an understanding these people were not stupid they knew at least one of the people in this server we will show was a child so let's start with the video Howdy doody everyone, I'm back, and this time I come bearing a script. So if y'all haven't heard, Alifi was here repositing some hot water for basically tormenting a young 15-year-old artist by the name of Slimer's Cryon. Be sure to go and give her some love, by the way, all links in the description. Hello everyone, this is Hopeless Features, and today I have quite a serious video. I will not be hiding any names in this. Well, a YouTuber by the name of Madam has recently been accused of stealing art from a 15-year-old artist I see where you're coming from, madam, when it comes to that. However, I don't think it's a reason to act the way you have been acting. Put yourself in Slimmer's shoes for a moment. You're a 15-year-old artist. Those of you who don't know what the madam drama is, what happened in it, this piece of shit YouTuber who calls herself the female Leafy is here. Not sure why you'd ever want to brand yourself like that. But she commissioned a 15-year-old artist. See, madam is a YouTuber who was interested in commissioning an artist called Slimer's. Slimers, due to their age, did not have a PayPal, therefore could not accept payment. She even stated Slimers is a child on Twitter that same month. Now, you probably recognize that voice. That's probably Akumu. Just to let you know, we are not associates in any way. I am using his information as a source because regardless of my own personal feelings on him, I don't agree with how he's going about the situation. He has objectively shown that these people have done demonstrably horrible things for years. Demonstrably. 
And this, this community has actively covered it up. Okay. Hold on, let's let's see. Why is it not as loud? Hold on, let me adjust that. But all these people, they knew of this. They objectively knew that Slimers was a child. And Slimers was in the FCK server, and they have directly added Slimers, talked to Slimers, even encouraged Slimers to draw pornography. So let's establish that off the bat. All of them fucking knew the ages of the people in there. I have seen them try to deny this. There is no denying this. They fucking knew. So let's wipe that right off the board right now. They fucking knew. No excuse. They even stated it outright. They knew one of the ages. And this situation does get worse. As Teddy, there's other people in the situation that knew of Teddy's age because they were friends with Teddy. But we'll, um, a good example of this is Hopeless Peaches. Hopeless Peaches was friends with Teddy around this time. Teddy was 16. Hopeless Peaches knew that. So I'm going to be up front right off the bat right now. Hopeless Peaches has lied, saying they only knew the age of one minor. They knew Teddy's age because they were friends around this time as well. Hopeless Peaches has lied in this situation, and now I'm questioning their motivations to do so. And yes, I am going to call them out a bit as well, as they were objectively one of the people enabling some of the shit in the server themselves. I'm going to call out quite a few people when it comes in regards to this, because it's one thing to not remember. It's another thing to objectively lie about something that is actually provably false. So we're going we're gonna to keep going. So... We need to establish a few things. For one, let's establish kind of, a, let's establish how these people interact with users. There's a reason why I showed you their ages, because I want you to understand, because this is going to be foreshadowing for the server, that this, this kind of behavior was already in the public eye. They didn't try to hide it. So we're going to first establish one of the main players, so you can kind of understand the main problem we're going to have here. Teddy, I would suggest you mute this section, because we're going to talk about Toasty, and not only talk about them, I'm going to showcase their videos. Now, Toasty Vanilla is a person... Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break in for just a second here. In my opinion, this Toasty Vanilla person is catching a lot of stuff for being one of the youngest people here. Um and arguably the most immature person here um but i am gonna jump forward because even though this video is honestly quite funny it's a little drawn out um n and not not meaning that in a funny way um being art art drama but yeah it's a little drawn out let's do this math so one sperm cell equals 37.5 so the young person that you hear talking here is uh toasty and this is one of the this is the um probably the uh these the uh oh god i can't think of any freaking words to explain it this is one of the more gentle things that he's done i guess one of the the less damning things that he's done uh, in this server is he's posted this video basically talking about the data storage potentiality of sperm and uh, the basic downloads of ejaculate, like the downloading memory capacity of ejaculate and stuff. It's fucking weird. I'm going to be honest. It's really fucking weird, but it's not like... Oh my god, this is like somebody showing direct porn to a child. But that that allegation gets brought up. Five megabytes of information. One milliliter of a hundred sperm cells is thirty-seven point five terabytes of information. Now one woo or one little special moment lasts about five seconds. I should also mention that uh, your storage capacity is thirty milliliters per and uh, sixty in total. Also, your woo is about like two point five milliliters. Meaning in the course of five seconds, our dick is uploading 93 terabytes and 750 gigabytes of the same 37.5 megabytes of copy-paste information at a rate of 18 terabytes per second. Imagine launching 7.2 million images onto Reddit. Imagine copying and pasting the B-movie script 2.4 quintillion times per second. Imagine being able to provide a lag-free experience to your average Smash Ultimate player. And imagine being able to download 
Skyrim 134 times per second. And speaking of Skyrim, and speaking of Skyrim, you can in you can store the entirety of Skyrim in only 467 sperm cells. That is 0 0.0004 of a milliliter, or four tenths of a microliter. You see this image right here? I want to die. That is a microliter right there. Now imagine four tenths of that. All of Skyrim, the entirety of it, in four tenths of that. It's fucking mind-boggling to me. And I don't know about you, but it, it is to me. And every day, your body regenerates approximately 5 million sperm cells every day. Or in other words, your testicles are producing 2.1 gigabytes of information every single second of every single day of the same 37.5 megabytes of genetic code that is responsible for creating the entirety of us. Our code of existence stored in the smallest cell of the male body has the capacity to hold a low quality shit post gif. Now, most studies say that each milliliter of semen can contain anywhere from 20 million sperm cells to 300 million sperm cells. On that lowball estimate of 20 million, that means your singular testicle has the ability to contain- Oh, do you understand why I showed this? Because, uh, Sorry, both I had to cut of that you discussed this with someone named Void in their server and stuff like that. Um, this was done around kids. Not only that, Toasty does this around a lot of children. This is important for context because this is exactly what the victims go through. If that was suffering, oh, don't worry, this gets worse. Because, uh, Toasty on his YouTube channel has posted porn. You heard me. <laughs> yeah, he actually got away with- oh, sorry, she actually got away with doing that. Because, um, I'm just making the point that this degeneracy, this terrible behavior, was out in the open for everyone to see from Toasty alone. Oh, don't worry, we're gonna establish that for some of the other creators here in a second. Not all of them, because we'd be here all day. We're gonna do it for another one, but we gotta establish Toasty a bit more. We're not done talking about Toasty. Oh, no, no, no. We're not done! <laughs> oh, that was the tamest thing I have from Toasty. That was the tamest. <laughs> now we must establish that this, this behavior Toasty has exhibited was not unknown to the community. Because the next video I'm going to play was from an actual collaboration video with Toasty and Fuchsia Butters that was publicly available on their channel for years that was- that had the thumbnail drawn by Teddy Draws themselves. I'm not kidding you, I'm going to show you the thumbnail so you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. This is the thumbnail Teddy drew for this video. Now, when I play the video, and you're gonna listen to the content within, do you think it's appropriate that Teddy, as a child, not only- had to draw a thumbnail for this, but was listening to this kind of stuff from Toasty and Fuchsia? Let's find out. Because you guys need to know exactly how these people interacted and how this community- That's the tamest. That's the tamest. Trust me, Toasty's videos get worse than that. The worst ones, I, can, I don't want to show- <laughs> I don't want to show- they get worse. They get worse. So we're gonna show another, another tame one, and it's the collaboration between Fuchsia and Toasty. And I cut it, so you don't have to sit through five minutes of horrible discussions again. So, yeah, I cut it, so that way you don't have to listen to five minutes of- So, here we go! Here's the video that's a collaboration between Fuchsia and Toasty. And I want you to listen to this content and think about the children that were being exposed to this for years. That everyone didn't seem to have a problem with, like, I want you to think about it as Toasty talks and same with Fuchsia. So what will it be? Kneecaps or no kneecaps? Surrender your cummies, bitch. No, I had clearly been outplayed and I was in a sticky situation. How could I have forgotten the ban on cum? And here I was, cum in my balls, standing in front of the server owner. It was a very tense situation, however we did strike a deal. I would hand her my cummies in exchange for the endorsement of Rule 12. However, that didn't fly past- Can I just say, this is just a sample of shit that I've had to listen to related to this drama. And some of y'all need to fucking get the fuck outside. Breathe air, other than the stale air that is in whatever room of whatever house or apartment you are in. Because clearly there is a buildup of CO2 affecting some people's brains. And it cannot be stressed enough how much some po fucking people need to get the fuck outside. I'll resume. As her, she slapped me with a counteroffer. You see, I could keep my cummies, and I would get a cum license. Um, to establish, Rule 12 was basically saying go subscribe and, you know, promote Toasty's channel and stuff like that. That was the Rule 12. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 
So, just so to establish, this community was fully aware of the kind of shit Toasty got up to. And even was doing it themselves with him. Uh, with her. My bad. My bad. This was back when Toasty was male. Toasty's now female. Now... Are you really surprised that there's another person who's changed genders in this? Are you? With all the preface that I've given you, can anybody really be surprised at this point that somebody else is a different gender than they were just a fucking minute ago? I digress. Again. Apologies. Oh, I apologize for that. Now let's establish, so that way, because I know she's going to run, um, Toasty did come back to the internet after leaving to go to the Marines. It turns out it wasn't the military because Junkie's an idiot. It was the Marines. Uh, she's back as a VTuber. She's uh, recently deleted her channel because the fruitcake leaks um, revealed her new account. The, I, I'm going to I'm going to show you um, I'm going to show you a clip from her um, channel and all that so you can recognize her voice and stuff like that. So she can't come back. So. So here we go. It's a, this is all important for context. I'm sorry, but you all need to understand exactly what these kids have been going through. This is Toasty's new avatar. They go under Ruby or Ego Launcher. We're going to show their profile, but this is their VTuber. Commit it to memory or spread it around. I already spread it to the VTuber community, so she ain't coming back. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, we're we're going to talk about why that's a problem that she has established a new identity, considering apparently this information has been known for years of this See, the joke is coming. Yeah, there's up. Oh, there's another victim, Mimi Dix. Go support them as well. They are one of the miners also affected. Welcome, Mimi. I am sorry that you walked in on this. I'm trying to establish exactly what you guys had to sit through. But this is Toasty's new channel and all that. Now, this is important why I'm showing you this because when we go through the FCK, I want you to keep in mind this is the bitch that did this to these children. This is the girl that groomed them. And I'm going to show you some of those messages as well. But yes, this is their new account. This is Mi Ruby Missile Launcher. This is their old YouTube channel, Toasty Vanilla. This is their n little info section. Hi, I'm Ruby Missile Launcher. I am a professional video editor and content manager that works for YouTubers, streamers, artists, and setting realistic career goals and improving their ability, confidence, and self-reliance in their craft. I'm establishing this because we're going to have to talk about some bad actors in a bit. And I'm saying that because Toasty was allowed to reconnect with the community and have a platform in another space. And this is a problem because Toasty has gotten close to people. But yes, this was their um, Twitter before it was deleted, but they actually did get close to people. Here is their Twitch. And yes, we have the Twitch video so you can hear exactly what she sounds like now so she can't get away. Because I'm making sure this one especially can't get away. She's the one that groomed a lot of these kids. Well, a lot of the other ones did too, but she was like the most horrific one. So yeah, she ain't running. <laughs> she ain't running. I'm making sure that hoe ain't running. <laughs> so, so you can see kind of what we're dealing with. We're going to show you a clip from um, her newest stream. So that way you can memorize her voice. And if she comes back, uh, you can tell her, hell no. Uh, stay away from kids. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think that's fair for everyone. Th just that. So... Let's see, evidence folder. No, 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 no. Ah, there it is. Guys. Guys, not Peter Griffin. Guys, no. No, they... They got Peter Griffin. No. No. I know this is probably going to come off horrible, but at this point, like, <laughs> um, like, was anybody surprised that their voice didn't change? Their voice didn't sound any different to me. Maybe that's just me being awful. Maybe it's just me being sick of shit, but... Their voice sounded no fucking different to me when they played this clip versus the ooh woo fucking bullshit we just got through. Oh my god, I need to take a screenshot of this. Wait, wait, wait how do I move my model? So that's Toasty's new voice. So remember that, kids. 
Uh, well, if you're kids, you shouldn't be watching this, but you get what I mean. Um, so, here, here's, I'm establishing this so you all know how bad this really, like, this behavior was out in the open. Toasty was very obviously a- <laughs> change gender to try to avoid accountability like Neo <laughs> did the bullets in the Matrix. Yeah. 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 That they did. I'm gonna just let this play before I say anything that gets me in trouble. Beyond what I've already said. <laughs> a problem, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. Remember when I said Toasty was grooming kids? Well, the victims have shared some of their DMs, and Toasty was sending them porn directly. I have censored it for your, for your eyes to consume. Because, uh, yeah, I don't think I can share porn on YouTube. But yeah, Toasty was sending porn to the minors. This one was sent to Mimi Diggs, who at the time had recently turned 17. And Toasty had sent um, full-on um, lesbians fucking each other to the point that, like, you see this entire white bar right here? That was all, all I had to censor that. It's so bad that 90% of it has to be censored. And they're not... <laughs> the whole thing is just black. It's all censor. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like... <laughs> Um, well, thank you, Jim. At least I, I appreciate that much. <laughs> I won't be canceled alone. Oh, uh, yeah, that's how bad this image was. The entire thing is a black screen. The only one. Um, Teddy also got it as well. Um, te um, basically, if you... Teddy got the porn, too. <laughs> Damn it. I have a lot to talk to Teddy about. Um, after all of this... I, I have to offer condolences, um, possibly a pronoun change, and a very, very piqued interest in what porn they receive behind all of this blacked outness. If you don't know how grooming works, they'll send kids sexualized images to normalize this behavior to them to make them much more easier to do that with. And as you can tell, Toasty, Toasty did this a lot. And the worst part is, these images you're also seeing were drawn by a minor that Toasty also convinced into drawing these images for her. So I'm establishing that right now. We are dealing with somebody that the community knew. <laughs> Was the child that the truth is blind? Because <laughs> I don't see a fucking thing. I'm sorry, I gotta bring light into this somehow. But, like... There is nothing on screen. I'm not trying to hide anything. This is not lag on anybody's part. This is just the video. Had done this because these images, you're going to see them in the FCK server. And you're going to see them be encouraged for Slimers to draw because of the FCK server. All these images you're seeing in these kids' DMs being used to normalize this behavior to try to groom them was in the FCK server. And it started from the FCK server. So we're establishing that because... We're n oh shit! I forgot to turn on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you there was no lag. There was nothing. This was not my fault. This was me making light of a situation that I knew was going to come up. I've watched this whole video, but <laughs> I just wanted to make some jokes because these were my initial thoughts when I saw this or didn't see it, depending on how you want to look or not look at it. So, here it is. So, here's from the Mimi Diggs. Full-on lesbian porn I can't even show. This is the Toasty images that were drawn by a minor that Toasty convinced into drawing them, and the FCK as well, that was sent to Teddy and Mimi Diggs. So, yeah. The, they, they normalized sexually perverse behaviors with these children. They normalized it, and it gets worse from here. Now, we're going to establish a few things. Like, Ted... Like, I've talked a lot about Toasty so far. Toasty, unfortunately, was not the only one engaging in these behaviors. And I have to establish that right now, as this is a major thing. All of them engaged in these behaviors, but I'm not going to show you all of these people engaging in it, because we'd be here for a long, long time, and we would not get to the FCK stuff. But And also, like, they act very similarly. So I'm going to establish, like, one other person who also acted this way. We just mentioned them earlier, and it's Fuchsia Butters. And unfortunately, like, they're...
I'm going to try and skip the fuchsia stuff here because it's not necessary as far as like the story that we want. Toasty is, but the fuchsia butters thing is not. They, they knew. They knew he was a, she was a fucking degenerate. They fucking knew. They fucking knew this shit was someone that was very, very inappropriate with them. Like, flat out. Because I, I, I've seen some of the victims have breakdowns. Like, the apology Fuchsia just gave, it's, it's not. We're a part of the silencing. The only ones that did try to win a little bit was Fuchsia and Peaches. And one of, one of Teddy's um, friends they currently have, and that's it. And both of those parties, um, Peaches and Fuchsia, stopped after the first initial Discord stuff. Because Toasty spun it as like, oh, they're shit-talking my friends and stuff. When in reality, it was the Teddy talking about these people enabling this gross behavior towards him. So, let's read this. You know Dylan, she won't put out for you, buddy. Maybe she will after uh, drops her and burns and she turns 19. I hear that's a bit old for him. That's not Joe in the second one. Okay. Okay, so we're going to switch to the next screen. Hold on. Hold on. I have them locked up. Oh, you have them? Feel free to send them because I'll read them on. Okay, I'm going to sit here and just offer a small critique in this because this gets a little drawn out. We're, we're an hour in. This is a four-hour stream. Um, we're just getting into some of the FCK stuff, but I really want to get into somewhere in around here. This is okay. So my my uh, my criticism is, I am by far, far from, and I mean, far from, like the most proficient YouTuber in any way, shape, or form. But I have. And I, I'm not going to sit here and try and break things to, like, just show you guys. But I have one, two, three, right here. We've got my starting screen, which you guys are now seeing. My normal screen. Which, by the way, I'm I'm on my, my little picture thing because I had turned out all lights because I was kind of getting a bit of a headache starting up. And I don't really want to have a migraine again. So I'm, I'm now going on the just the video screen. Um... Then I have the broken just me one, which is which is like the picture that you saw drawn by the child. Uh, my be right back. Um, my social media one, and my ending. And then I've got one that I set up for like recording where it's literally just screen is what it says. Um, but like I got all that. So the reason why I have all that is so when i'm doing things i i don't have to like sit here and like turn oh my god i can't even find it turn things off and on like i just feel like that's an unnecessary step i could just go to like my social media screen swap stuff around or more likely than not um most of the time i just want to be off camera I already have everything set up. I know kind of what I'm doing beforehand. And that's not to say this person's like, doesn't know shit. Um, I'm sure at 5,000 subscribers, basically, this person probably is a little more aware and talented than I am. But I, I think uh, I think I offer at least an, an edge over this person as far as the smooth transfer department goes. I say smooth transitions, but that would get into a touchy subject, and we've already gotten into too many pronouns and everything else. Jesus so, if, if you were wondering why the victims didn't speak out, that's just an example for someone that was just calling Junkie out. And the reason why Phantom Menace got silenced is because Phantom Menace, known as Super Menace now, he was calling out pedophiles. He was calling out pedophiles that use fetish art to groom kids. And Junkie and them took offense to it. So, Junkie pretty much silenced somebody that was objectively doing good for the community oh and someone asked junkie knew yeah he knew because i have it in a stream i'll show you the stream because we do need to establish everyone including the smaller people knew i have the live stream people can understand the kind of shit these kids went through um okay as i beat the living crap out of my mic um 
I'm I fast forwarded to I think this is where they do a good scroll on the server and give you guys a good idea. Like I said, this is we're not gonna go through this whole thing. It sets up a good preface. You guys kind of probably a lot more understanding in the FCK, the fruitcake server, and what the hell went on that triggered all this drama and why why people are up in arms over this. And just know that because of Lyo Convoy and Hopeless Peaches and how they handled other particular dramas that were brought to light, um, that's why people really got pissed off. But Thuman's going to platform their story, so once again, please go subscribe to Thuman. She's going to platform all the victims' stories, and they're going to speak, talking about their experience of the FCK, so go subscribe. So when that happens, you can see it firsthand. Go support them. Go support Teddy and any of the victims that want to be supported, that want to be publicly supported. That's why I'm not saying all like all the usernames of people involved in the situation, because some of them don't want to be known. So we're going to start with the server. So hold on. I'm just scrolling down a bit just to make sure there's no porn. Okay. So the beginning of the server started October 8th, 2019. So Toasty Vanilla, Holly Woe, and Kelly Tubby join in. Now, I don't know who these people are. Um... So that's kind of concerning that these people were not mentioned in the fruitcakes leak thing. But there's two additional people. This person starts off by showing uh, pictures of somebody. And then the first thing literally said is that this is that one N-word who's on all levels accepted physically is a wolf. Man fucking followed me on Instagram. WTF. Uh, we're already starting off to a great start. Um, the N-word... <laughs> Keep in mind, everyone in here is fucking white. <laughs> they white as fuck. They pasty motherfuckers. So, yeah, so... Laugh that their plan backfired so fucking hard she became a millionaire. <laughs> that is so fucking funny. I'm sorry. It's like, how do you fuck up so bad the person that you all collectively shit on became rich? How did you fuck that up? You had one job. <laughs> one job. I'm just trying to see. Defend child. Make abuser rich. How? How'd you do this? How? Uh, Slimers and James are doing an interview, so I'm going to c see if I can catch that into this. Slimers has joined the chat. I'm here. Oh, God, here's the child. Oh, no. Let's see how these grown adults talk around this literal 15-year-old minor. Um, this is Millie Woke. It was, like, I, I think this is a perfect advertisement for birth control for everyone. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Why did... Just trying to see if Jesus fucking Christ, Pro Jared gives you an idea on where we're at in time. Boom. I'm just trying to scroll through and click through and see if we can get some good stuff. Um, that's the person you heard about earlier. This person actually goes on to change their opinion of a Como in this in in this exact stream I can't answer it because it's like bazoongas oh. toasty i we just saw a real life picture of you you photoshop boobs on i don't even think you can lift up a turkey sandwich girl you haven't gone you haven't gone to the gym i can tell since birth the hardest thing you've ever had to do was pop out of your mom's bazooing okay you have not worked a day in your life and it shows i i saw it on your face i saw it in your arms how the fuck am i more buff than you my wrist drag him in the water i hear the cow going you're dumb as fuck but hold on when you file a copyright check it doesn't show the person you copy struck their info right they're basically saying it doesn't show them my personal info because someone dm me and told me what happened to h3 h3 and i want to confirm it's not true so if so i'm fucked you mean it shows your info yeah my address and stuff no it's illegal for it to show thank fucking god my heart dropped for a second that's not true it shows your info to them that's not true no. whoever that is fuck you Oh my god, that's how Slimmers got doxxed! You dumb motherfuckers! When you file a copyright claim, the- This- this gives you an idea on how impassioned this person is, um... 
just I'm gonna let it play. I'm still kind of clicking through because Cursing I'm trying to remember against. where Get the your good stuff is. Because you are filing a legal suit. It's a you are filing an actual legal claim. That's why YouTube doesn't get involved. Having what the fuck was that? Oh God! Fucking the cool and fucking Americano. I'm fuck done. Fucking done with these Americans. Fucking done. Y'all need to fucking get offline. Holy shit! You people are incompetent. <laughs> oh fuck you too. Ah. Oh. God, how much of the CC am I gonna be disappointed in? It's getting worse by the second. Commentary community is what CC is referring to there. Oh god, how bad does this get? No, I thought about making an alt, but nah. Even if Madam tried to false copy strike me, I know her address because <clears> filing a cop false copyright strike would show me her info. Yeah, it also shows her your info, Slimmers. So Akumu didn't dox you. These dumb motherfuckers just did by encouraging you to do so. I would have told you fuck no. Not just on the fact it would give them your personal info, but on the fact that this is a highly immature and inappropriate way to handle the situation. You can talk this out. If she's being a little child about it, you don't have to resort to copyright strikes. Okay, I think we can get it. I think we can be done with this. I think. I'm I'm pretty sure. And by that, I mean we're going to be done with it. Um, let's see. So we've gone over... Um, do, 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 do. I think it's time to introduce everybody to Lyo fucking Convoy. I think it's about that time. Now, how do I want to introduce you guys to Lyo Convoy? Um, hmm. Hmm. Do we do it through, like, somebody else's video? Like, I could show you the Kumo Lyo video, because that's a pretty good one. Um, it's also, mm, it's kind of along, along those lines, but I think what I should do is show you something something unrelated uh so let's 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 go to queen seraphina because again queen seraphina is related to all this and we'll get into a little bit of wild con i offered this is fucked up why are you only going home if i call you now this person uh joshua vita um I, I'm just reading their name out. I have no fucking clue who the fuck they are. I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> but I know from researching a lot of this shit that they were actually outed as like being like actually bad predatory like towards children. Like uh, you saw a bunch of stuff with uh, uh, with the previous video, but this this kind of I can explain and call for your own issues, Vina. And you have. I never said I was. Okay, so the person that you're hearing right now is Lyo Convoy. Lyo Convoy is speaking with Joshua Vita. Lyo is our head retard wrangler for this whole just group of lovely fucking individuals. Yes, you are. You're saying, well, you're, you're partly responsible because you made this decision. And what if I, I do this? I don't care about your what ifs, Vita. If you decide that you're so mad and you're so upset that you are willing to throw your own morals aside, Mr. I'm going to dox Anthony because he didn't back me. You're putting a child in danger because you are super upset, Spaghetti. That's a you problem, not a me problem. See, in these clips, he's genuinely thinking that he sounds scary and intimidating. But I'm not a brony, so asinine threats like that don't scare me. Zoophiles, child molesters, these people aren't exactly known for their courage. And what were they going to do? Show up at my Vietnam War vet father's house and pick a fight? Good luck with that one. My wife also packs heat. All he would have done at that point is ensure one of his brothers in molestation gets put into the ground. He's used to trying to manipulate others using flawed arguments, all because he refuses to take accountability for his own actions. You can already get a tasting of just kind of the inflammatory individual that Lyo is. Actions. This is a man in his late 20s that couldn't even handle unloading a truck for Walmart. His lack of values and clearly entitled mindset likely comes from his mother. His mother, by the way, tried to put the onus on Mint for her son's actions when she was told about them. This idiotic, foppish woman raised her crotch spawn to be just this worthless. And even now, lets him loaf around her home with no plans for the future because she was too stupid to swallow or wear a condom. I know I keep being repetitive, but I need you to understand that Joshua Vita is a mentally and emotionally disturbed person. He likes to think he's some sort of monstrous threat because he's used to dealing with bronies. People on the internet that are easily spooked due to their own softness. But against anyone other than a brony or a literal child, Joshua isn't a threat. He's all talk and no action. 
This is a man who blustered when we ditched him that he had plans for if I ever turned on him, while actually having nothing. He's so unspeakably dumb that he said he wouldn't talk about his actions with Jazz, but actively did with his actions towards Mint. On Twitter, of all places, and his actions towards Mint are far more damning. During this meltdown specifically he had because Mint removed their fictional children, with Vita here treating them as though they were real. For a final case here, he one day started demanding that he talk to Jace. Yes, that Jace. Joshua's claim was that there was totes a pedophile in our server, and he only trusted Jace, yes, that Jace, to handle it properly. And if we didn't turn Jace, yes, that Jace, over to him, then we clearly don't actually care about pedophiles. We told Jace, yes, that Jace, about this, and his response was, I will continue to play my video games. We found out later that what he was trying to do was frame Mint for pedophilic and zoophilic screen caps. Vita poorly edited the screen cap to try to reflect that. The irony is Mint wasn't even in our server. Of course, Mint just handed us the real ones, which show that those images were posted by Joshua Vita. And before you ask, yes people, he is that stupid. This isn't a chess grandmaster. This is a man that would be lucky to figure out Connect 4. He then proceeded to constantly harass Mint via multiple phone calls, several threats, and some hilariously pathetic voicemails. Links in the description for those. Emily, I'm sorry for contacting you again. I really am. I was hoping to give it a while before I did, because I wanted to give you some time, but there's something serious I'm going on I really need to talk to you about. I'm, I'm genuinely afraid. If you get this, please, I know you... You're trying not to talk to me anymore, but I just, I really need to speak to you. Thank you. There's more to all of this and a pattern of behavior we'll get into later, but this is what leads us to our next story. After Joshua did his best sad boy impression and deleted his accounts, he ran to another community. The Twitch Dead by Daylight community. For this third section, we transition to one of the most recent situations involving Joshua, his actions concerning minors in the Dead by Daylight community. Since he could no And that person that you're hearing is Queen Serafina. Surprise, surprise, also not the gender you would have expected based upon their caricature. No longer go after kids under the Vita name in the Brody community, he had to infect another. This leads to victim number three, Jibs, who will be speaking from their perspective of what Vita did in that community utterly revolting for all of this to happen, but it needs to be known that this disturbed fuck needs to be exposed for everything that he's done, and hopefully people will be able to recognize him if he ever shows up in another internet community again. Of note that wasn't previously mentioned is that Josh was also trying to use Jib to do deep ops on us, telling her flatly to overemphasize her parents' abuse because he thought this would mean we wouldn't contact them. Hence, he wouldn't be reported. This is Joshua Vita actively being aware of and trying to exploit our empathy for an abuse victim to cover his own tracks, because he has no standards and no shame, and a man who's been slapped in the mouth more than once apparently has to come back for seconds. I actively tried to help this man-child for years before we found out about all of this. I tried to push him to better himself and to start living his life as an adult should. And don't let this snake try and convince you that he didn't care about the people in the room or that none of what we did mattered to him, because he has no problem admitting that me leaving actually hurt him in a private call. I don't know. I just, I don't know why I'm talking about this. It's just, I think half of it is because I actually enjoy talking to you and I don't like admitting shit like that. This is more about me than it is anybody else, isn't it? Honestly, yeah. I mean, you talk about, you know, I don't, don't show any kind of, oh, yeah. goddammit, I'm getting emotional. Son no. of a fucking bitch. No, no, I, I do get mm. that. Um, yeah, I don't show that, but I do respect you on like a way deeper level than anyone else just because it transcends just the all at face value internet bullshit stuff is this that it just made you mad or did it hurt you and i want you to be honest with me so that's lyle convoy um as you can get an idea he's brash he's loud he thinks he's tougher than he actually fucking is he uses a lot of stupid idioms that well i guess that was a double one chapter but uh he's a lot of it just um, just awful fucking language. I, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, he really genuinely thinks that he's tough, and he's not. This is the guy, okay, if you were around in the pre-dawn um, Motorola Snake era of YouTube and Newgrounds and E-Bombs World and Mini Clips and all of that, all all of that loveliness, right? You might remember a video of a guy aimlessly swinging a lightsaber around in a room. That man would be Lyle Convoy if we knew who that man was. And I'm pretty sure we do, and it's not Lyle, but I want to say it's Lyle. Anyway, 
I think uh, that was as best of a as best of a warm up as I can give you to Lyo. Um, I think we really need to get into. Oh, I think we need to get into probably either Akumo's or Kumo's video. And I think we should start with Kumo's video. Collaboration with authorities. Because this uh this kind of had a beginning of the beginning of the story for everything as well. So and this also gives a little bit more preface to Lyle. Predator hunters, predator catchers, predator poachers. These terms may sound familiar. Even so, the internet has made it my job to autistically over-explain and elaborate as to what these are. Predator hunters, or the more fitting name, predator poachers, are the internet's modern take on a special victims unit. Descriptors I personally like to apply are pseudo Chris Hansen, internet vigilante, discord detective, so on and so forth. Individuals who take it upon themselves to enact vigilante justice, but these days, as of 2024, that's a bit generous to say. I'm getting no, to that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. So that's also your penis, right? Oh yeah, there's three pictures. I use AI to catch a predator on Discord. I made a fake female alt on Discord and used it to go predator fishing. And once I got one on the hook, he sent a selfie, which I ran through advanced facial recognition software to identify exactly who he is. The former typically would be in a legit position of authority, law enforcement. Former EMS workers who've worked in collaboration with authorities, often partaking in sting operations. These stings would consist of setting up a fake underage decoy on the internet and sparingly engaging with only the most desperate predators that would take the bait. The end goal would be to lure the child predator to a house designated and monitored by law enforcement. The involvement of law enforcement is crucial due to the intricacies of forensic analysis. If evidence is gathered in an unconventional manner and unorthodox practices are employed, the integrity of the case crumbles, the risk of prosecution being in vain. Let me spell this out for you. Predators get to walk free. Now that brings us to current day. How has this changed over time? Well, given the famous Dateline NBC is no longer airing due to controversy I couldn't possibly explain in this video. I'm not about to go into this because he plays entirely too much of this. Not only ineffective, but detrimental to any progress made towards removing predator hunters, predator catchers, predator poachers. These terms may sound familiar. Even so, the internet has made it my job to autistically. Ah, oh, the video restarted. I accidentally hit a key. It's Chris Hansen. The perceived utility of these ops and people like Chris Hansen were brought into question, and they were deemed not only ineffective, but detrimental to any progress made towards removing dangerous criminals off the streets, and any attempts to rehabilitate said individuals has been significantly regressed. But not to be mistaken, this content has only served to inspire many neckbeards and window lickers to take these dangerous criminals to task, with today's subject being the epitome of them all. Okay, Doesn't mean I'm part of that community. You want By the way, I hear tell that this is a true, in, in real time picture of mr convoy himself like this is this is really who we're talking about here i know community i'm in the boomer i'm in two communities the boomer cartoon community i hunt pedophiles oh that's one of those idiots idiots huh go ahead tell me how stupid i'm no no he is actually he is actually a pedophile hunter he actually oh okay i'm sorry yeah a lot with uh quote unquote pedophile hunters it's most of them are idiots. Cool. Oh, I actually, I actually try to help actual them of child predation. Hence the kid down the hallway. <laughs> Not very likely. Well, I'll let you know a little secret. Um, mm -hmm. Elio disowned me. Uh, and that's yeah. I don't know his kid anymore. Oh hi, I go by Lyle Convoy and welcome to my channel. I know it's not very big yet, but I'm working on it. Want to know what my channel is about? Good question. Here it goes. The purpose for this channel is to give my thoughts and opinions on various media. Why? Because you need to hear it, of course. John, it's 1.30. No. You need to get up. Why? Because if you don't, I'm going to hit you with these nunchucks. Why? Because friendship is about nunchucks. Well. Why would I go there? All I have to do is watch Macross and I'd already be there. Let me guess, you are live. Yep. That's it, I'm not live at all. This is the problem I have with all of you cocksucking idiots ring up feet every time you with me. You drag the trauma of his victims out for a gotcha on a guy who tried to help them. You are an unrepentant, immoral scumbag, and the better off the world would be if you turned yourself into a statistic at night. Somebody just to lay hands on you, frankly. Like, you're so goddamn stupid. And you don't care what he has done to these people. You don't care about children he's preyed on. You just think it's some sort of gotcha on me because I made you butt hurt. Dick up with my family. Bring them into it and see what happens. I'm literally sitting in here with 600 or 867 viewers, and after this, people are gonna watch this video, and you're gonna be the laughing stock you should be. I hope you like all the attention you're getting, Mr. Rose Gang, because this is the most you've ever gotten in your entire miserable life. Maybe I ought to shove you in the freezer. We suppose we had four days after you found out in 2020. It took you but days to remove a child predator. Would you do I it? I think it was like. It took you days? 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 They should have taken me five goddamn seconds!
you are the most, one of the most hateful pieces of garbage I ever knew. To gaslight you, you have to have intelligence to begin with, Mr. Intellectual, which is why you're scared to get in call, because you know I will rip your throat. In light of the recent controversy involving Mama Max, the timing of this video couldn't have been any better. Working on this video for nearly a year, not only is the timing poetic, but eyes already seem to be on this very subject. I'm also gonna toot my own horn again. I'm in that video from Turkey Tom. Not that I got credit or anything, thanks Turkey Tom. But I'm in there, which is enough for me, honestly. Like, I'm just happy about that. Anyway, back to the video. With many sharing the discrepancies I've had for a while now. Today's video is long overdue, and we'll be talking about Thomas Guerrero, who most of you may know as a guy who calls himself Lyo Convoy. The Lyo Convoy channel, run by a 37-year-old Thomas Guerrero, had its humble beginnings talking about 80s cartoons, engaging in pedantic power-scaling debates over anime, video games, Star Wars, etc., soon branching out into the channel the bulk of you may know him as, a toy reviewer who dabbles into predator hunting. I say dabbles with the most obvious quotations because whenever his channel runs dry or stagnant from uploading toy or cartoon reviews, he coincidentally uploads one, two, three, Jesus fucking Christ, ten in recent memory, not counting live streams and today we'll be discussing what's wrong with this picture and believe me there's a lot to unpack i hunt pedophiles Thomas Guerrera, or as most of you might know him by now, Lyo Convoy, was originally a toy reviewer and a active member in the brony community. How did I manage to read that out without laughing? Okay. Not only is the premise of this content dangerous to produce, but its production creates many negative consequences for the victims. In fact, you guys have gotten all the preface on this from me, so we can actually jump forward a little bit. And as far as Joshua Vita goes, we did the best we could. We found out three days later we exposed him. We had to catch him off guard. We had to make sure his victim was safe. Joshua Vita is actually the video you just watched. It's almost like I put this together and like choreographed this and like made it make sense. I don't know. I guess I'm just tooting my own horn again. Because he was going to absolutely target her and still does to this day. Damn Heartbreaking. Still? Yeah. We Jesus. just passed the cops. More information. We just got about a fourth victim. Now, granted, Josh is currently on probation for 29 months for computer crimes. So that was a fucking lie. So Lyo Convoy in this call with Lago Vert recorded by Pizza, a member of Lyo Convoy server, this call is apparently archived because they didn't want this out, uh, publicly, and I imagine for a reason. He states that he found out three days later about the activities of Vita, and I think I should stop putting this off. It's been long enough. Who is this person, this individual who goes by Vita? Mentioned by two very good friends of mine are currently working on a video going over Omnia's entire video because apparently, according to them, what they have told. Whoops! Uh, wrong flashback. Right here, just a uh, wrong event. We will be going over this. It because it happens to coincide with the events we're going to talk about. Now, the correct flashback would be to 2020, about three years ago at the time of recording this video, and we are going to be looking at a person called, for no good reason, or FNGR for short. Now, any well-versed Lyo fan would recognize this instantly as a former associate of Lyo Convoy. Anyone who's even more well-versed in Lyo Convoy lore would know about a server called Barrel. Well, as it happens, Vita... This is the server that I was talking about that kind of predates the... Um the Senate and all that. So the barrel server, top of the barrel, it's all the same thing. Um, but this is where some of these uh, individuals kind of were brought around and like actually are some of these people that he later goes after are first linked to Lyle Convoy. Was a former member of Beryl. He was actually a former predator hunter, as Lyo Convoy likes to call himself. The story goes that Vita allegedly groomed this person who went by Mintheart. Mintheart would later transition and start going by Jordan. I managed to get in contact with Jordan, but the person Lyo keeps vaguely referring to is just Jordan. And as far as Joshua Vita goes, we did the best we could. We found out three days later we exposed him. We had to catch him off guard, we had to make sure his victim was safe because he was going to absolutely target her and still does to this day. But let me stop my tangent here and let you listen to Jordan himself. So I, I met Thomas in 2018. It was probably around March of that year when I met him, and it was following the Toon Critic situation in the My Little Pony community. Okay. Would you be comfortable giving us sort of a um, brief background on um, what your life, what you were going through in your life when this happened? Yeah. So what I was going through was um, this functional family is the the short way to say it. Me and my siblings didn't get along. Me and my mom were at each other's throats. Um, I was undiagnosed depression and anxiety at the time. And it was just it was just a mess, especially because I was also uh, being groomed by Vita, so that it didn't help anything. Uh, it was just it was just a lot. It was a lot. All right, and then what you're about to hear is going to give you 
some insight into Lyle Convoy. And remember how when I was talking about like the whole brothers and sisters thing is going to tie back in around and like the incest shit. Well, we have come to the tie in. This is where it all gets tied back in. So you're now going to hear how uh, this person was moved in with Lyo and just some kind of interesting stuff about Lyo and uh, you know, this found family shit. The relationship developed very slowly, um, or I guess kind of fast, depending on how you look at it. So we were acquaintances at best uh, leading up to 2020 after the Vita shit happened that year, early that year, about March, April. I was, uh, I guess, kind of cast out of Senate, because Senate was a thing at that point, because I was sticking by Vita, despite what he had done. And when I eventually came to my senses and went to go talk to him uh, after my birthday in June, then he took me under his wing. So we, we were never really friends or that close, leading all the way up into 2020, but come my birthday, so June of that year, it, it kind of went a lot faster. Jordan's retelling sounds very reminiscent of the Lyle we know today. This sort of suggests that we've been right about Lyle Convoy all along, that he doesn't have the qualifications to act like an authority on these subjects, and he doesn't know what he's doing. Going by Lyle's standards, this would be an unforgivable crime, but it doesn't make it any better that Lyle selectively admits this when he thinks it might be convenient for him. I'm not asking any predator hunter to be someone's psychologist or therapist. We're not, we're not made for that. We don't have that knowledge. We barely have the knowledge to do predator hunting. According to Jordan's testimony, it seems that Lyo has always been playing this sort of side-picking game. And you would think if someone like Lyo perceived Jordan to be a victim of not only grooming but sexual assault, that a man well past his 30s would be able to set aside commentary antics. And as far as Joshua Vita goes, we did the best we could. We found out three days later we exposed him. We had to catch him off guard, we had to make sure his victim was safe because he was going to absolutely target her, and still does to this day. In this very clip where Lyo is talking about one of his former associates that would allegedly go on to groom Mint Hart, Lyo Convoy explains that they found out about these activities and three days later exposed him. Now the problem with this is if there was even an ounce of weight to the claims about Joshua Vita, Lyo giving it publicity and farming it for drama content only contributed to the impossibility he was complaining about, that being Vita getting charged with any sort of sex crimes. And this isn't speculation. According to... I just want to lay out right here, Kumo does a fantastic job at laying out just how bad this is. I'm just going to let him keep going, but holy shit, listen to this. To the testimony from the alleged victim themselves, that is exactly what happened. But I should specify one thing in particular. This testimony given to me by Jordan had nothing to do with Joshua Vita. In fact, it had to do with the very reason Jordan was involved in any of this. And so you said the cops wouldn't do anything. Is there was there skepticism trying to say like help you in that situation? Yeah. So there's a couple a couple things. So one, I, I was not raped. Rape in, uh, requires penetration, and that did not happen. I was sexually abused, um, as the, the professionals put it when I talked to them. I was interviewed by um like a kind of like a like a like CPS. I don't remember exactly what they're called. Um, mm -hmm. DHS, like a department of CPS. Um, Humane Society, I think, something like that. Department of Public Safety. So, so I talked, maybe, maybe, I don't honestly remember. I, okay. For life, I can't remember. But I, I did, I did go to one of those, you know, official buildings. I didn't talk to people. They interviewed me, um, because there was no, no penetration, no rape. It was incredibly hard to prove, uh, and it would have been my word against his. And because it became this really big thing on the internet, the police did have reason to believe that it was, it was all fake. Uh, and thus, because there was no proof, it was my word against his, and because they thought it might just been for attention, then nothing was done about it. Can I ask why it was a thing on the internet once you, when you were trying to get help? Uh, so. I, I first told my friends about it because I, I didn't know how to, how to react or how to feel. It was, it was the middle of the night. You know, I don't want to get woken up by him touching me in the middle of the night. You know, 16. I'm scared. I'm confused. So I, I message my friends and, and I get told, let's make you a GoFundMe. Make a GoFundMe so that we can share it so we can get you the hell out of there. And that's what I did. And because, you know, my location's there, my name's attached to it, all this information, that's pretty easy. I was pretty easy to find. And mandatory reporters were reporting it constantly to the police. Actually, I actually got visited by the police uh, and they, were, uh, they came to ask me to take it down because they're getting so many reports from mandatory reporters. Um, Who were the friends? So, so that's why, you know, they, they, Still friends there, there's, there's, there's a lot of people I told. Okay. No. There's a lot of people that I'm not in contact with anymore. But I believe the, one of the first few people I told. I was, I was just curious, if, like before, before you. Uh, I don't expect you to list them off because um, you said you're not in contact with them anymore. But one of them was Vita, right? Because I heard that Vita was the one who made the GoFundMe. Well, no, I made the GoFundMe, but he he was given the, um, the access to it, which then he passed off to Lyle because he didn't want the responsibility. So okay. the person who I, I could be wrong about this because this all happened on Skype and this all got gone at this point. But I believe the person who told me to make it in the first place was a Santhropy. I, I could be wrong about this because this is a long time ago and those logs are dead. This guy, this shit. I think it was him who told me to make it. It was the very vigilante involvement that Lyle not only continues to partake in regardless, but even takes pride in that starved this situation. So did you hear that? Basically, this person went to the police with a a true uh, case of of uh, sexual abuse. We'll put it that way. So, and with this SA, there wasn't much the police could do. Basically, they said it's a he said, she said situation. They referred her on to some other people. She went and talked with those other people. Um, they kind of 
looked into the situation and said because of the intimate, intimate, internet, um, drama drawn kind of up around this, that there's really not much that they can do. Um, so one of her friends, probably in one of these discords, said, hey, we should set up a GoFundMe to kind of get you the hell out of there. Uh, because the person that they're alleging is their their mother's uh, significant other kind of did these inappropriate things. So they're trying to get the hell out of there. And one of the people that was helping them at this point in time was Vita, someone who Lyo just did a video that you watched. Or just, he did a video on them that you just watched. Um, he ends up calling out Vita for being a pretty fucking awful person. Uh, I know we didn't really touch on the whole context in that video, but that person was in Senate because Senate exists at this point. Remember they all met in the barrel. Then uh, what came after the barrel would be Senate. So, and after at this point, you're now talking about uh, prior to Vita being ousted, they were, uh, trying to help pass along this uh, GoFundMe to Lyo uh, to help this girl get out of this house where she was being essayed. Of justice. Mint Hart was not removed from the situation to protect them from Vita. Mint Hart was actually moved in with Lyo because Mint Hart was prior to this living in Nebraska at the age of 18, all by their lonesome, whilst being suicidal. Um, so you said that it was then passed on to Lyo? Was, uh, yeah, Vita, Vita gave it to me. I heard you raised a pretty hefty sum with that GoFundMe. Um, was, was that money ever used in, in any, in any, in any way to try and get you up off your, get you up off on your feet and, um, independent? Or was that kind of just the, the, uh, the reimbursement for taking you in when you started 18? No, uh, it was, I used it to move me from Oregon to Nebraska. Oh, okay. And be situated there. Okay. And then why did you have to move from Nebraska to Texas? Uh, because I tried to look uh, I tried to myself and Lyo did not want me living alone in a state where I knew nobody. So he, he wanted me in Texas where he could keep an eye on me and make sure I was safe. Speculation aside about the ethics of a nearly 40 year old man moving a suicidal teenager in with him that outside of the internet had no real con- I'm sorry, but I can guarantee you living in the state adjacent to Nebraska, Nebraska is enough to probably drive anybody to be suicidal. That state, uh, it defines flatness. Let me just say that. Maybe there's stuff when you get further out west. I don't know. I got bored halfway through in Nebraska, turned around and came back. Connection to. It was it was his idea um, for me to move in with him. He had brought it up as a possible solution when I was going through the stuff with my mom and her ex-boyfriend. Um, but that wouldn't have been until after I turned 18. And it wasn't talked about again until I until after I turned 18. And I was looking to moving out. He, he wanted me in Texas so he could keep an eye on me and uh, make sure I was being safe. But I moved out alone um, for the first time. And then in March of 2021, again, and I moved to Texas, kind of request slash insist. What made the idea of adoption appealing to me is the fact that I, I come from a very shitty home. You know, like I said, my, my siblings and I didn't get along. My mom and I weren't getting along. I, I felt very alone in how I felt and just not okay. And my, my dad isn't in the picture, so I don't have a father. And I, don't really have, I didn't have any strong father figures and to me because why was the only in my eyes sane adult around he seemed like the best the best choice and he presented himself as this this moral good father figure that i could look up to that would care for and support you know support me well as explained in the first clip of jordan's testimony lyo convoy again did not move mint heart in with him in order to protect them from joshua vita in fact it's explained by jordan not only once but twice in both of the interviews i've done with them that lyo wanted absolutely nothing to do with them and made no real efforts to help them the relationship developed very slowly um, or i guess kind of fast depending on how you look at it so we were acquaintances at best uh, leading up to 2020 after the Vita shit happened that year, early that year, about March, April, I was, uh, I guess, kind of cast out of Senate because Senate was a thing at that point because I was sticking by Vita despite what he had done. And when I eventually came to my senses and went to go talk to him uh, after my birthday in June, then he took me under his wing. So we, we were never really friends or that close leading all the way up into 2020, but come my birthday, so June of that year, it, it kind of went a lot faster. All the while in current day, going around bad mouthing the mother of Jordan. Now here's the context a minor who went by the name of Minthart was touched in their home. This was taken to their school, their mother, and the police. The perpetrator was their mom's ex boyfriend. None of the groups I mentioned did anything about it. Not the police, not the school, and their mother even let the creep stay the night after she knew what he did. And over the last few years, giving himself credit for doing anything about the situation with Jordan, whilst admitting that he did nothing and could do nothing about Jordan's situation. Mint was worried he was going to get back a third night and had no options. No friends to stay with, no shelters that would keep them. So the only thing anyone could think of was setting up surveillance so if something did happen, Mint could send it to the police. Mint. Not me, not anyone else. And on top of that, it was an idea. It's not something they went through with, because thankfully they didn't need to. Just felt the need to interject here. The reason they didn't need to is because the prior that Lyo just said was a bit misleading. It wasn't that nobody did anything or tried to help Mint Heart, it's that they couldn't, due to involvement from people like Lyo Convoy, the existence of the GoFundMe. But I will show screenshots up on screen of Jordan clarifying that this wasn't their idea. They were in fact coerced by these internet 
alternate vigilantes, and not only that, Mint Heart wasn't the one who made the GoFundMe. So in actuality, Mint Heart had no control over whether this GoFundMe was taken down. In Jordan's retelling of these events, their mother was on top of it immediately, and there was no mention of the boyfriend staying another night, but instead, Jordan being safe behind a locked door, that being their room, while they waited for the boyfriend to come collect his stuff and leave. All works. How exactly are we supposed to lock these people up? We file reports to the police. That's literally the most we can do on a legal end. Remember this one? We had to catch him off guard. We had to make sure his victim was safe because he was going to absolutely target her and still does to this day. Note that he claims to keep Jordan safe, but then immediately contradicts this statement by saying that they were still targeted by Vita to that very day. Oh, trust well, me. Apparently he is on vacation right now. Even though he's still messaging in the server, apparently he's on vacation. Oh no, trust me. I know how that feels because I'm inundated with this stuff 24-7. After that video dropped, I've had six people DM me about them being preyed on. I don't do this for some asinine idea of cloud. Most of my predator hunting, most of it, believe it or not, is quiet. The reality of this situation is it couldn't be further from the truth. Bio is often too busy playing Among Us and baby talking peaches in a Discord. By the way, I kind of like led on to this earlier that you're going to hear some cringe shit between Lyo and peaches, but... You're, I don't know if you're prepared for this. Call at least 15 hours a day. There have been complaints ad nauseum that Lyo Convoy, when reached out to, can't do anything for these people. Myself included. I've tried to reach out to Lyo Convoy a very long time ago, long before I was ever removed from the Senate, blackballed from the community. Lyo Convoy actually does not handle predation cases. Lyo Convoy does not help victims. Aside from stalking, doxing, harassing, and getting these people in calls to badger them and upload it to his YouTube content farm, Lyo Convoy does claim that the only thing he can do is assist victims in making police reports and telling their parents. Not only something that is probably taught to every child in a fucking school assembly, but you can learn the latter through a simple Google search or a YouTube video. There are plenty of these. I, hell, I can link some of them in the description if you genuinely don't know. You don't need to go to Lyo Convoy directly to get this sort of information. But the real reason why people go to Lyo Convoy is this sort of lout factor. They want publicity. Lyo Convoy discovers what Vita was up to behind the scenes. Well, he found out three days later and he exposed him. Now, if I'm being entirely honest with you, I've never exposed anybody with no intentions of gaining personally. Well, I know I personally had the noble intentions of exposing the subject and getting more people aware about this so they could steer clear of, say, individuals like Carmen Ryder or Brion. I've never once claimed that what I did actually did anything to sort of find justice for this situation. The difference between a guy like me, who since from the age of 17, has made videos, very few, exposing people for very serious shit with the intentions of people in those circles or people who have been oblivious or ignorant, just to let you know, I think we're going to end up ending on this video. I think this gives you a good setup, good understanding of uh, Lyle Convoy, um, the kind of person we're talking about. And then we've already kind of touched on the drama, um, but it'll give you a good idea as far as like part two is going to be a lot, a lot rougher because of the stuff that I want to cover. So, uh, I'm just going to basically let this play out. I'm still going to interject my commentary and stuff, but this is likely going to be it for the evening. So once we're done with this, I'll probably do my sign outs and everything. Um, just if you enjoy the content, please remember like subscribe if you want. Uh, I also put out content on a bunch of other different platforms. So if you catch me there, uh, feel free to give me a like or a comment on those platforms too. I try and check things. So I try and uh, genuinely respond to people quite frequently, especially on YouTube, because that's kind of where I predominantly do this stuff. And I'm featuring a lot of YouTube content, but all right, shameless plug over. Let's get back into it to these facts that they can steer clear of this and keep themselves out of legal trouble and possibly even out of danger. What I don't do is take credit from actual professionals and people who do go out of their way and get shit done. To make sure this statement is complete, I am insinuating that that is just what Lyo Convoy does. And I cannot tell you how excruciatingly heartbreaking it is to have to tell some of these kids, I'm sorry, but if you can't tell your parents and can't call the police, I can't help you. And I live with that every single day. It is draining. It is exhausting. When a guy like Lyle Convoy puts it like this, you know, it would be believable that it's draining and exhausting. And someone with a good heart with good intentions might genuinely be heartbroken by this fact. Problem is, Lyle Convoy is not actually heartbroken by this fact. He's, he's actually completely fucking unbothered. In fact, he goes about 
about his daily life, having fun, messing around on the internet, and does this sort of as a hobby. Need I substantiate any of this? Well, I don't know. Look at the bulk of the guy's content. The bulk of the guy's content is playing with and building fucking toys on his channel and talking about cartoons. When he's not doing that, as I said, he can be seen baby talking hopeless peaches or playing video games with hopeless peaches. And by the off chance that Lyo Convoy is bored and needs a little spice in his day or even week, he will get into a Discord call and scream his head off at someone until he's about to have an aneurysm. Yes, I'm not joking, there is a clip out there of Lyo Convoy damn near having a heart attack screaming at a neurodivergent person. And that's actually the call that I really, 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 really want to cover in depth. And I've got the full, full call. And unfortunately, it's a long call. And that's why I know there's going to be a part two of this. And I know a lot of people haven't gone over it. So, hey, Teddy, you know, we were just talking about you. And I want to... I want to say that I'm sorry, and I'm here for you, buddy. If you ever need anything, let me know. Uh, pronoun change, anything like that. Uh, you know, I'm just... I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're a drug into this. Now, this is something I frequently allude to in this video, and it's something I haven't really elaborated on and have just said in passing, so I'll go ahead and clear it up here. Lyo Convoy sort of asserts himself as this moral authority, and I'm not just asserting this baselessly. Lyo Convoy has gone on record to say many times in every situation that he is morally correct, even in situations where he objectively can't, can't be, couldn't be, there's not even... Teddy, I just want to say, I don't want to put you through, I don't want to re-victimize you, bud. Um, but we've we've heard you brought up um <laughs> uh i just you know you were talked about you were featured in some of this content um i didn't know i didn't know that you were underage um i'm sorry that you were victimized uh again if you decide to change your gender because of all of this uh jim and i support you um we will call you whatever <laughs> uh, whatever you like um, <laughs> i i just i don't want to re-expose you i i cannot be the person who re-traumatizes you even a fucking iota of a chance that he could be reason being the very same person who goes around parading himself about how much he has to protect the children how much he does for victims has no problem calling the school of a 15 year old telling them that that kid is planning up to shoot up his school suggesting that it's to ruin his life all because he couldn't get a leg up on him in an internet argument now ironically enough this is something similar to what one of my first commentary beefs was it was when two kids mind you kids teens preteens whatever drove through very poorly crude dicks teddy if you're gonna drag it out of me I guess, I guess I can like, okay. We heard that you were in the fruitcake server and in the fruitcake server, you were asked Teddy that draws, uh, to do some things and draw some things that, uh, can only be described as mild porn. And we had no idea that you were under H. Uh, we, we thought you were young based off of the Lindsay video and, uh, um, <laughs> I, I had no idea. Um, however, your art was fantastic. So, um, keep up the good booba. Um, just make sure it's covered. Um, and you, sir, ma'am, have a clear talent. And, you know, you can be whatever you would like to be when you grow up. Um, I, I, Teddy, we have proof. We've seen the logs. There, there was a stream. There was a four-hour stream that I, I had on my stream for a little bit just to give pretenses just for your involvement in the fruitcake server i mean we all saw it and you know if you ever want to speak out about whatever hopeless peaches did to you um just know somebody will listen um 
Somebody will. I'm gonna keep playing this. In MS Paint to fuck with each other. And oh, by the way, the drama that they're covering right now. Um, I didn't talk about this. I actually found the full call. It's kind of funny. Um, basically, two fifteen, and just because I know, I know my diatribe in support of Teddy and their choices. Um, I'm, I, they're just so victimized that I had to kind of go over everything for them. This is just a habit of things we've noticed with Teddy. Um, but, uh, so this, this involves two 15 year olds. Neither one of them is Teddy. Um, and what they were doing was they were in a discord call, just going back and forth. And I don't know if it's covered in here totally, but Lyo comes in and he, it's in, uh, the Senate or something like that. And, uh, basically they're, they're going at each other. Um, and Lyle comes in and he's, he's not recognized right away when he says hi meekly the first time, hi slightly more aggressively meekly the second time and decides to uh really throw his weight around let's just put it that way lyo decides to intervene because because he's lyo look i'm involved because i choose to. in the previous video i made discussing the habitual hypocrisy of lyo convoy i discussed his weird obsession with bullying minors the most egregious thing when it comes to bullying children that lyo has done is a video that was actually uploaded by queen seraphina in this video you have two 15 year olds that were bickering with one another because apparently one sent porn to the other well, you think it's good? oh yeah, yeah, I, probably yeah, yeah. Uh, I should be give me a few reasons well number one i can figure out how i can figure out very quickly where a kid lives by their photo and i'm pretty sure you probably got one running around Oh, yeah, you come to the house. I live in a gang neighbor and I have guns, so. No, I'm not going to shoot every car. Okay. Okay. So he jumps in and immediately is trying to intimidate the kid, is talking about getting the kid's address. The kid, who, by the way, is complete cringe like every other 15 year old, rightly assumes that that means that Lyo is starting to come to his house. And to be very clear here, if that was said to me, I would assume exactly the same thing. So I can't really blame the 15 year old here. You literally threatened me. Look, I'm going to go to that you, 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 you come to the house, I'll put a bullet in your skull. Just say, You're not going to put anything anywhere. Your airsoft guns don't scare me, son. Sit down and be quiet. I actually have guns, fucked hard. I'm not worried about some dumb 15 year old making threats about firearms. I want to ruin your life. I'll call your school and tell them you made the You won't get anywhere alive. You want to play this game? We can play that game. So after Lyo heavily implies that he's going to go to that kid's house, the kid threatens violence, which is actually not totally insane because if I was 15 and some guy who's almost 40 is threatening me, I'd probably make the exact same cringe threats but whatever point is he goes from that to jumping to talking about calling the kid's school lyo opens with you should be scared of me i can get your address who's really the one responsible for the provocation in this scenario is definitely not the 15 year old oh yeah yeah say my fucking face dreadful jacks you want to know what happened with him he was pulled into call independently not given any roles to try to get him to stop beefing with some other dumb kid I hop in the call and Jax loses his mind. Fucking funny, man. You have no balls. Jax, shut up. Friends to shoot me. Friends to do all this. Who the fuck's Lyo? Jax, how old are you? Uh, I'm Lyo. Involved? And how old 15. are you? 15, man. What, you think I'm scared of you? Oh, you don't no, know. You probably you don't should don't know be. yet. Uh, I should be. Give me a few reasons. Well, number one, I can figure out how we're, I can figure out very quickly where a kid lives by their photo. But and call his parents because they're deaf. And I'm pretty sure you probably got one running around. Oh, huh, yeah. You come to the house. I live in a gang neighborhood and I have guns, so. Which is why he gets away with this nonsense. No, I don't know. I called a school. Because as you know, Pizza, we live in the United States of America, where school shootings are pretty common. You literally threatened me. Look, I'm involved because I choose to. You come to the house, I'll put a bullet in your skull. Just say. You're not going to put anything in anywhere. Your airsoft guns don't. Can I just say, this man lives in Texas. Supposedly, like, the stage most associated openly with toughness and like cowboys and like hardness and um not that kind of hardness teddy calm down uh, i i didn't i wasn't trying to re-traumatize you a fourth time um but like just really tough individuals and this man is literally bullied by a 15 year old and trolled and he's older than me and i was laughing at this kid like he's being like just fucking stupid he's being 15 year old stupid and like this guy takes offense enough to this to then dox this kid and then go a step further call the kid's school and say that the kid was threatening gun violence to then get this kid pulled out of class and everything else. Me, son. Sit down and be quiet. Fucking sick yeah, individual. I'm not worried about some dumb 15 year old making threats about firearms. You want to ruin your life? <laughs> <laughs> Weird sense of success. He's sick, old man. All right. All right. 
Alright, I see how it is. I'll victimize you later. Get anywhere in life. You want to play this game? We can play that game. And the last thing I want is to have this idiot pop off his mouth about how he's been in gangs and how he's hurt people and how he has guns and do nothing only to find out, oh, the kid went psycho and killed people. So what's happened to make some old boomer that wants to talk about 80s cartoons get his choking hands ready? Well, that takes some context first. A year ago, there was some drama regarding a content creator named Hopeless Peaches. A young female, Sonic enthusiast, had an entire cavalcade of clownish cretins hop out of the woodworks and paint her as the worst of people. What did Peaches do to seemingly deserve this? Did she kill somebody? Did she diddle a kid? Did she commit tax evasion? No. And here's where the content warning comes in for my fellow boomers that make up the majority of my viewership. I'm asking you to mentally prepare for the stupidity because most of us have jobs, families, and bills to worry about, and I don't want you to have an aneurysm over this when you realize how dumb it is. Here's what she did. She corrected one portion of grammar in a script criticizing an acquaintance, allegedly was a bad friend in some cases, and talked about her mental health issues on Twitter. Yeah, you feel that headache coming on? That's your brain trying to understand how soft someone's life must be in order to think these things are worth losing your minds over and trying to ruin someone's life. And for those of you who are going to try to say this isn't an attempt at life ruining, shove it. I'm not here to listen to your apology on your own stupidity. Video after video came out accusing this woman of these terrible crimes. Calling her a bitch, a liar, and a backstabber is not a crime. In fact, Hopeless Peaches even needing to have a segment in this video is a problem on its Is that really where you want to be sticking those peaches there, Teddy? I, I, which which person are you which person are you victimizing with peaches? I want to know. Its own. You see, this would have stopped, and this wouldn't have been discussed if it was just you white knighting for hopeless peaches. But you couldn't stop it just having your head up her ass. You had to adopt her too. You see, the story goes that Lyle Convoy had. Oh, by the way, everything you just heard Lyle cover was all the previous drama that I had just told everybody about with everything that went on with. Creep show art and everything. Yeah, that was why I was stepping in a white knight for a person who had no idea who he was. Um, just simping for a channel that was larger than his. And he decided that, you know what? I really like them peaches. And so he went after her harder than Boogie goes after predators and just went for it. Um, I don't know, that was an awful analogy. I take that one back. Um, anyway. Met Hopeless Peaches amidst her drama, and because of what was going on with Vita and Beryl, he did not do anything about it. Um, not that he was really obligated to, but I suppose their relationship begins because they made friends and amends over a broken promise, or an empty promise that Lyo had made. Now, when I'm sitting here talking about the relationship between Lyo Convoy and Hopeless Peaches, I'm not actually here to entertain any of the speculation as to whether their relationship is romantic or not. I think they give everyone enough fuel to speculate anyway. In fact, let's unpack that a bit. Let's assume that Peaches and I are in some sort of relationship. I mean, we're not, but let's assume. Why would that be an issue for Zay? Oh yeah, Zay has a pattern of wanting info about someone's sex life. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. So first and foremost, this particular clip is very performative. He even goes on to act like he has some kind of like shivers going down his spine. Peaches is an adult and frankly doesn't call me daddy. Ugh. But we all know full and well, the fact that he can baby talk and be really suggestive with Peaches is indicative of that not being the case. And furthermore, the fact that he could even enter- The only thing I would have added is Kumo could have gone a step further and actually gotten the baby talk. Uh, the baby talk that I actually heard, oddly enough, was on Zay's uh, video. So, the, you know, he could have pulled it in. It was an easy gimme right there. You had the location of it and everything. Um, by the way, Teddy, I'm not victimizing any person. I'm victimizing the peaches. Well, now I'm just confused. What did the peaches do to you? This sounds like hatred against Georgia. I'm just going to say. And not the country, like the this, state. Despite it not even being presented in Zay's video, is actually a sign of projection. It's something that Lyo likes to accuse others of doing very frequently. Something I feel important to mention is that this interjection is in response to Zay, formerly known as Kai Weiss. These people are all sick weirdos. Look at yourself. Look at your daddy. Pull up a mirror. You're a fucking weirdo too. And again, I've been saying it. Zay sure likes to sexualize things a lot. I'm noticing a pattern here. In fact, let's unpack that a bit. Let's assume that Peaches and I are in some sort of relationship. I mean, we're not, but let's assume. Why would that be an issue for Zay? Oh yeah, Zay has a pattern of wanting info about someone's sex life, made up or not. They're just that level of desperate for dirt. An effeminate queer black male who referred to Lyo as Peach's daddy. Now, if you've ever had any seasoning on your chicken, or I don't know, maybe if you just aren't... Okay, these jokes landed worse than my last joke about Boogie, okay? Let's just understand that right now. Uh, Kumo, you're worse at me at telling jokes, and... <laughs> and uh, apparently are slightly less aggressive than Teddy when it comes to Georgia. <laughs> that state is not for me. What about the country? Now I need to know your opinion on Georgia the country as compared to Georgia the state. Um, 
you know, does your opinion transfer? a pretentious racist liberal, you would probably understand that Zay was just being sassy here. There was no sexual connotation, and the amount of times that people accuse Lyo of having a sexual relationship with Peaches is quite few and far in between. So that begs the question. The question I haven't even asked yet. Why would Zay, calling you Peaches' daddy, have any relevance to him trying to dig up information on her sex life? It's almost like you're insinuating that your relationship with Peaches has anything to do with her sex life. I'm having way too much fun with this. Peaches is an adult, and frankly, doesn't call me daddy. Ugh. Now frankly, we wouldn't be here talking about Peaches and Lyo if all they had going on between them was, uh, that they're a bit fucking weird. In fact, we're only talking about them right now because if Lyo had a right-hand man, it would be Peaches. If Lyo had a handler, it would be Peaches. Well, great news, Kumo. Since this controversy has come to light, Peaches is now no longer a woman and can definitely be Lyo's right-hand man if it weren't for, uh, Peaches turning on Lyo. That, that might put a thing in it. By the way, Teddy likes the country. He just doesn't like the state. He called Georgia a garbage state. I feel like Matt Pitt might have something to say about that. Peaches. If Lyo had a number one influence in terms of his actions and his behaviors, it's probably more than likely nine times out of ten Peaches. You see, Hopeless Peaches has gone on record multiple times to lecture Lyo and convince him to make decisions that otherwise he wouldn't have stood by. And I'm so proud of myself for structuring the video in this manner because I get to explain that without even focusing on Hopeless Peaches directly. Oh, look. Huh? Your favorite's in the chat, but you can go Why'd there. you go off? Go off. Oh, Kumo. Yeah. Look at these silly adults in productive conversation. I work more than you do, boy, and I don't make people cut themselves. October 23rd. Wait, Kumo's... What? Wait, hold on. Kumo's saying, look at these silly, really productive adults contributing to our society when they're literally a dumbass who came to you crying because they were caught making girls cut themselves. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Fat bitches need to shut up. Yep. <laughs> October 23rd, oh wait, oh wait, hold on, Kumo. Also, didn't you go into a? Haven't you been going instead of you know contributing to society yourself? Haven't you been going into different servers trying to spam um documents about me and videos about me and make and now making thumbnails for someone who owns a lot of zoo porn? Yes, that's exactly what he's doing. He likes hanging out with zoo files for some reason. Whoopsie. Yeah, Kumo loves oh, zoo files. What a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. This whole section's a little too Gen Z. So I'm going to break it down for those of us that are not from Georgia. Uh, so what's going on here is uh, basically Lyo and Peaches were kind of in this open, um, I don't know, open like stream uh, where they were talking back and forth. We're making a little bit of uh, ooh woo um, senpai fucking shit back and forth with each other and basically uh akumo or uh, basically kumo ended up walking in on them and was like the fuck is this degenerate shit um that's kind of just the gist of it uh but yeah there, there's a little too much zoomer going on here um uh, uh. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, he's Holy like fucking people shit, people dude. People Literally lying. Absolutely talking about your people there, Teddy. Um, yeah, this, this, just the cut in memes is a little too zoomer. Still lying to his audience. So a little background behind this clip in terms of what I was doing and how I even got myself into this little uh, mess to begin with. I had coincidentally been doing my research for my Lyo video, <laughs> meaning I was watching Lyo videos. And in the play next, it showed me that Lyo was actually streaming. Even more context is that my video on Hopeless Peaches that has been archived and will be linked in the description had been falsely struck by likely none other than Hopeless Peaches herself. The reason being, timestamp I got was a clip of Peaches being an ass, not me. So naturally, I'm curious as to what the fuck they're even doing in this live stream together. Holy and shit, I, I watched this so early on, I forgot there was a whole video that I'm missing. Bloop. Met with okay, I can I resume. Met with these two baby talking each other. <laughs> By nature are good. Anyways. Ooh, what is that? A ducky, a ducky, a ducky, a duck, a duck, a duck, a duck. <laughs> Eat the shit out of me, daddy. So those of you who know me and have been watching my content for a while, you know I'm actually pretty smug sometimes, especially when someone I don't like is embarrassing themselves. So I left this very innocent but uh, ambiguous comment in their live stream chat, and it states as follows. 
Look at these silly willy productive adults contributing to our society, catface. Now something Peaches absolutely fucking hates me for is she calls me arrogant and narcissistic, uh, neo-Nazi, racist, homophobic, transphobic. Wait, that's off topic. Well, any- By the way, I had no fucking clue that that was a cat face. I'm just gonna come out and fucking say it. I had no fuck. Okay, I kind of want to like pull up what I thought it was, but uh, um, I don't know how to explain this. Like it's let's see if this one pulls up. I mean, I mean, this actually, yeah, okay, okay, we'll go with that one. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. Let's, uh, images. I thought that that, like, three with the, the eyeball thing was this. <laughs> this is like the apparently woozy face um i also associated as the drunk emoji in my opinion but okay see looks looks like the little and the okay i've got you turn that on its side it looks like a three and a colon okay not a fucking cat face all right rant over whoa whoa Whoa. Whoa. Too much of that. Anyway, Peaches thinks I'm just an arrogant ass, and that's because I've expressed to Peaches in the Senate before that I'm just fucking smarter than her, and she she's like, uh, Teddy, you're, you're about like everyone, don't you? Uh, thirty percent. You're thirty percent of the Gen Z people that I know, and uh definitely in the top three. Um I only know three, so, but you're the top of the three. Let's put that, let's put it that way. Um, to be fair, I didn't know that 07 was a salute until Nick pointed it out. <laughs> okay, okay, at least I, I knew that for slightly longer than you, Teddy, and I'm not like throwing that, uh, <laughs> I'm the one percent. <laughs> um, I mean, if you want to be the one percenter, you can. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, what the hell was it that I was on that I learned that? Like, oh, sevens in chat, and I was like, someone's like, oh, it's a salute. I think it was now recording. I think I learned this on now recording. Sentiment uh, to which Peaches had this grudge start with me because I, I simply explained you know, Peaches, chat Peaches don't set the bar very high. <laughs> you know, someone who's addicted to the attention and status they get from being a fucking victim all the time, whilst simultaneously being arrogant themselves and having a god complex. Well, <clears throat> someone like that, uh, that someone, I mean, I'm referring to Hopeless Peaches, you know, it didn't sit well with her, and uh, she's <laughs> ever since then definitely had a fucking grudge against me. And not that I mind it, um, but what I do mind is when you make egregious fucking claims like this. What's the deal with Kumo? and has helped me find a way to move forward and accept the truth. With Dr. Spinell's help, I have come to accept what really happened in September at the Martin Family Residence. I accept, what, I accept that what happened was not the result of any supernatural phenomena, you said that, but rather the desperate actions of a young girl driven to violence by her dogmatic parents and old church rituals that are thought to drive out evil. I am happy to report that, since accepting the truth, my nightmares have ceased, and I am contingent upon follow-up appointment with Dr. Spinell in the future. Sincerely, John Ward. We don't talk about Kumo, Momo, true. Features is the keyboard ASMR champion. <laughs> sorry. This is the most confusing fucking thing ever okay so you've got uh hopeless peaches banging on a fucking keyboard like these fucking goddamn i don't even know helen keller and her fucking toaster oven i i have no fucking clue i was going somewhere with that anyway you got um fucking lyo reading who the fuck knows and their whole fucking while you've got faith the unholy trinity playing and I don't know if this is because Lyle, like, pseudo thinks he's, like, fucking religious, but that's, like, not a religious game. Just because it's got faith and you're playing as a priest doesn't mean it's religious. Like, okay. Anyway, rant 
rant on that one over. The girl to cut his name into her this is weird. Bloody handkerchief. I banned him from the Senate, and now he hangs out with zoo files who talk about raping me. Now, those of you in my audience who've been keeping up with my live streams already know what the answer to this is, but to those of you who haven't, who are new, or have just heard this in passing before, and never had a chance to look into it, well, because there is literally nothing to back it. Well, you in particular might be wondering, well, Kumo, all this shit in this video is pretty damning, but is what they're saying true? I mean, I might have to disregard everything you just said if it's true. Well, rest assured, buddy, it's not true what so fucking ever. You see, the zoo files that I'm being accused of befriending are people that go by or went by the Fox Mafia. And a little background on the Fox Mafia. Well, I'm not gonna sit here and explain the fucking lore on them because I do have a video planned on them in the future. But the Fox Mafia was- And we covered the Fox Mafia. I, uh, huh. Cast War Fox and all that. I already told you about all that stuff too. See, you came into this so fucking smart just because all the goddamn preface that I fucking gave you. Oh my god, Teddy. I know where you're going with that. Teddy. It was run by someone who goes by, or went by, Cass Warfox. I, I like to call him Cass Warfart, so that's what we're going to call him for the rest of this video. But Cass Warfart was actually very responsible for the exposing of Coyote Lovely. That, that thing that Hopeless Peaches and Lyo like to give themselves credit for, even though, like, they knew- You better put the rest of the arm on that fucking slash that you just put in chat. You better take that slash and turn it into a seven. <laughs> Just waving. Just waving. <laughs> no fucking way you just said that. No fucking way. You know, there's a part of fucking YouTube just for that. Knew about Coyote's bullshit. Now I gotta cut all this out of there. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm gonna have to go back. Hold on. Hold on. Alright, but anyway. You came into this a lot fucking smarter just because of all the preface that i gave you i read off a whole bunch of shit i made you watch a bow blacks video with just a robot i made you watch all these things and it's like how is this all tied together and you thought i was just giving you a character sheet and everything else Fart was actually very responsible for the exposing of Coyote Lovely. That the thing that Hopeless Peaches oh, and no. Lyle like to give themselves credit for, even though like they knew about Coyote's bullshit eight months in advance and didn't say anything until this stream happened. Anyway, Cast Warfart also happened to be one of Lyo's biggest detractors. Cast Warfart and Lyo Convoy. Y you could go as far as to say they were like each other's arch nemesis. They had been beefing for like years at this point. Now, I have my opinions on Cass, and I think he deserves his own video, just because he's also a pretentious piece of garbage, and he's also somehow more of a pussy than Lyo. Well, anyway. I kind of already had the background on these guys since, you know, one of my admins was in both the Senate and Bart Mafia. So I already had the gist of it that these people were just Senate 2.0. And I already went into this with a closed mind. But I realized, you know, these guys fucking hate each other. I feel like if I get these ones to trust me and think that I'm going to help them, they'll give me literally everything they've compiled on Lyo. Because at this point, it's been proven to me just by looking into the shit they post that they are autistic and obsessive about the Senate. So, I mean, who better to give me sources? Who better to give me shit to look into? I mean, I can proofread it on my own and determine what's real and what's not. And uh, I'm very capable of thinking for myself uh foreshadowing not even foreshadowing spoiler the fox mafia didn't like that very much well that's aside from the point let me get back on track uh i made it my mission to completely social engineer and manipulate the fox mafia into pretty much doing all of the hard work for me for my video that means digging up clips screenshots organizing them all and putting them in a fucking google drive for me. okay and i can say from watching a five hour fucking live stream that yes this is substantiated by people in the fox mafia they basically said that, yep, hey, this is true. He was just kind of there. He was a shit poster. Some people didn't like him. And we weren't really a fan of him, but um, yeah, he was there. And uh, that's all he wanted was information. And people thought he was a shit poster. Um, something that Lyo kind of tries to use against Kumo several times. Uh, that's basically the synapses to hold that for me so that I didn't actually have to continue doing all the digging on Lyo myself. Insane. Now where the work comes in is organizing this and actually constructing the project itself. I, I think I saved myself probably another five months of work just by using these idiots. Now, there's something else I should mention. The Fox Mafia and I, we're not friends. We're not friends. We are not friends. I was not associated with them technically. I mean, I was in their spaces, but I wouldn't say that I was friends or associates with them. I just used them. It was actually more abusive than anything, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. You see, and, and not only that, a former Fox Mafia member came into my 
live chat recently because yes guys this this video is kind of being recorded as everything's going down i'm sorry at least the end portions are being recorded as everything's going down but vash lancet came into my live chat to literally corroborate what i've been saying on my live stream that i was not friends with any of them and in fact i was a massive dick to everyone in that server if you still don't buy it let me just go ahead and confess that every time i spoke to cast warfox in a voice chat i made it a point to tell him to kill so that's where the screenshot that you just saw actually came from was the live stream that I watched before all this. And I also made it a point to emphasize how serious I was when I said it. So this notion that I was ever friends with these zoo files, which unfortunately, guys, we can't even take any of the claims they make against the Fox Mafia seriously, given that not only do they lie in the claims they make about Fox Mafia, but just the amount of lying they've done up to this point. Before we continue, before we continue, um... Let alone the fact that, like I said, the Fox Mafia ousts um coyote lovely coyote lovely was also like a high priority person in the senate server and a very close disciple of uh lyle convoy <clears throat> firstly doodle uh hello hi um i see that you're upset with the video that was made and particularly um first he's upset upset with um you doxing their real name on facebook and putting a five-year-old innocent little girl in danger over internet drama thoughts Thoughts number one, Dawson is releasing the private information. Your Facebook is literally linked to your screen name. And I would like to say as well, if you make a video, especially one, how long was it? But it was like a long, it was like, it was like nearly 10 minutes of just a, a first game literally talking about all the ways that they'd like me to be sexually assaulted. If, um, if your name, if your real name is linked to you talking in graphic detail about wanting to assault women, that's probably because in the real world, if you go around and talk about the graphic detail in which way you want to sexually assault a person or have that happen to them, that's called sexual harassment and can, you know, the police can be called upon you and be spoken about. I know that online it's very hard for you to understand because you hide behind a furry with a bib, but uh, in the real world people don't like that and usually people frown upon that actually. It's something that you shouldn't do. So, um, don't do that, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hopeless Peaches. I think we were all having doubts. We didn't know what everyone else thought about sexual harassment. Well, now we know that if you sexually harass someone, that society frowns upon that. And as much as I would love to get into the forensics of this particular clip and explain to you why her language is indicative of lying, namely the latter part of her tangent that literally went nowhere, it just kind of unorganically segued into a tangent about sexual harassment bad. I'm showing you this as sort of an example of the lies they tell about the Fox Mafia and why I'm so skeptical of everything they say. Because if these people really were this bad, I don't know why you would need to make shit up like this. So, unfortunately, a Senate-adjacent person made a rookie mistake, and his mistake was contextualizing this particular clip I showed you of Peaches. And what I find extremely ironic about this is I couldn't even bully this clip out of Fox Mafia. I couldn't even bully the original video out of them. They just flat out uh, were probably just refusing to show me it, but they were claiming they didn't have it anymore, which- I'll just put a timestamp on screen and you can skip ahead. But of course, I'm giving you approximately three seconds before we play the clip and just how fucking disturbing it is. Three, two, one. Like, what he got his fucking, like, ass gaped and torn, torn asunder by fucking Lyoman giant like throbbing white barbed lion and peaches i really hope like fucking daddy lyo bends you over his v for like the stupid shit you just pulled because i can't wait okay so the person that you're listening to there is uh phrase freddy's god damn teddy's buddy uh slimers um <laughs> now i'm gonna call teddy freddy for the rest of the stream just to be a boomer uh so slimers is one of the per one of the people that you heard referred to earlier um they were somebody that was in the fruitcake server they that uh uh hopeless peaches was also in that's where toasty was that's where uh freddy slash teddy was um <laughs> um and so this is uh this is slimers uh or slimer z or what however the hell you say their name um calling out kind of like this is after the bridge was burnt um basically this is post uh oh god i'm trying to think of how to put this in the timeline for you guys so this is post coyote lovely burn stream um but after all the stuff uh or no before all the stuff that came out about the fck server um basically where uh they already knew that slimers was kind of victimized and then slimers and kess warfox and coyote lovely 
uh, Coyote Lovely and Slivers actually went at each other kind of in this whole conversation where they were outed as being tied in with the love triangle with Sappho and Zicarlo. Um, by the way, you missed that, Teddy. Uh, I'm going to time out right here. Teddy. Teddy. You missed the zoo? Hold on. Hold on. I want to make sure that I, I lay this out correctly for you. You missed the person that is a Nazi zoophile with ties to the furry raiders, who is also another Nazi group, uh, who's also a zoo sadist, uh, who was supported by Keffels and is in a love triangle with uh, Hypnotist Sappho, who has a Turkey Tom video on them. Um, uh, Hypnotist Sappho is a zoo sadist um, also. So the zoo sadists are people that really really do some depraved shit with animals involving violence. Um, they also are both zoophiles. Um, and then uh, Hypnotist Sappho's uh, trans uh, male to female, whereas Carlo is a trans female to male. And they were in a love triangle with Coyote Lovely, who is a male who lived with the Nazi and was also in love with uh, Sappho. You missed all of that. Okay, back into the video. It's like fucking see the video. Because if a video gets made of like you getting your fucking ass like fucking gaped like Coyote Lovely did, oh, it's gonna be so great. Yeah, genuinely disturbing. What I think is genuinely disturbing is how you can completely remove the context of what this person was saying and just take all of their words extremely fucking literally. As we can clearly see, something he's supposed to be presenting as the worst moment. This clip is obviously hyperbolic. And the suggestion, the sort of connotations here are that Fursky Doodles is implying they hope Peaches gets taken to task the same way Coyote Lovely did. Contextually, they were talking about and reacting to the expose of Coyote Lovely. Now, would I have used these words to say the same fucking thing? Not a chance in hell. But then again, I'm not a degenerate furry who has an F list of all their kinks and all the different shit. I just have to pause and come off mute. You have no idea how much I just laughed at that. But yes, actually, Teddy, you missed the beginning of this stream. So you missed all the talk about the Nazi zoo file love triangle involving uh, at least two transgender people, potentially three. I don't know if Coyote Lovely, I believe I heard that they are also transitioning. So it's a potentially... Uh, gay straight lesbian couple um you know there's a lot to unpack with that one <laughs> the nazi zoo file cabal yeah i mean that that's probably the best way to explain it without having to get into like worrying about misgendering somebody or being labeled something worse than a zoo file a nazi Zeus a hypnotist, uh, or any of the other things. Apes of dildos they like. Given this is one of the main people you refer to within the Fox Mafia as a quote unquote zoophile, I feel very inclined to take it with an entire salt shaker whenever you make an assertion about them. So, needless to say, the Fox Mafia will be covered in their own video. I don't like them. I think they have plenty of things they need to be called out for that don't have anything to do with being called zoophiles. But, to say I was ever associated with them or friends with them is just a very baseless and misguided assertion, and it's definitely the furthest from the truth. The next... I'm actually going to skip this because I... I don't want to get into Gilded Poo yet. Um, I There's a lot of interesting stuff that comes from the Gilded Poo situation. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop the video right there. I got to review the Hopeless Peaches video. Um, but yeah, Teddy, you missed a lot. There was Mr. Medicare. There was uh, the Zoo File stuff. The Nazi stuff. Uh, I didn't even get into the Furry Raiders. Um uh the the anthropomorphic uh diaper fur uh scat uh porn artist um oh geez there's quite a bit um hopeless peaches and their entanglement with creep show art and how bo blacks and just a robot did that 
Um, I just want to make sure we're kind of caught up on everything. Um, Gilded Pooh, who we're going to get into, it ties into the Queen Serafina person. The Queen Serafina person, remember, is a video we watched with related to uh, Vita. Vita uh, it would, uh, Lyle Convoy in it, and that was kind of my first introduction to you guys. That would be this video right here. Um, Queen Serafina is the one that kind of gets into it with Gilded Pooh. Um, and so there's a bit of a back and forth. You could even call it uh, shit flinging. Um, what else? We got doodle tones. We still haven't touched on Ephraim. Uh, we still haven't gotten into the Zicarlo stuff. So technically, Teddy, the zoo, uh, the zoo file Nazi with uh, ties to the furry raiders and uh, ties to Keffel's uh, love triangle is still upcoming. Um, so you technically didn't miss all that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Teddy Gilded Poo. This is uh this is a troll that's related to all of this. Um, he uh he had a he had a dispute with Queen Seraphina that I'm gonna cover on the next show. So we'll have the we'll have the zoo file Nazi uh Gilded Poo, um probably the uh ways not to talk to a person that is mentally handicapped stream um that is the rosary ramsey call uh what else and then kind of the wrapping everything up as far as the lyle convoy drama goes and that'll kind of bring you guys up to current date um it's just there's a lot i wanted to basically have this one be the history and the understanding to get you guys kind of caught up to the point of the drama breaking what happened with the drama breaking um this is too much i follow mainstream commentary drama <laughs> yeah uh leia's actually done i think somewhere around um oh god maybe 20 40 hours of content covering um just lyle convoy gilded poo she's actually had gilded poo in the chat and on the stream i believe um but yeah i think we're gonna get into all of the good stuff on the next one we'll probably also talk about like the found family incestuous stuff um maybe get into a little bit more with uh oh kiwi farms um Lyle Convoy and Hopeless Peaches are also entangled with Kiwi Farms, uh, which they've got some interesting flamenco-esque history there. Um, other than that, and then I think we'll tie it all up with the uh, diaper, diaper fur porn chick uh, kind of defending herself and distancing herself from the furry uh, PDF hunter guy. Um <laughs> yeah teddy you ever want an interesting deep dive go check out the furry raiders i think uh i think you'd have a fun time looking into that um the furry raiders are some very 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 interesting people let me see if i can you know because what better way to end the stream than with a little bit of history um the furry raiders uh flag we'll just go with the flag is very uh um throwbackish we'll call it to a couple of other things um so you might be interested in like uh like looking into the history with the furry raider stuff <laughs> um they've they've got a, a lineage one could say um <laughs> 